All right, all right. We are here. We should be back again and live this time. Uh, let's see. Can everybody hear us now? Let us know. Can you hear us? And let me check. They're saying much better already. Yeah, dropping no frames now. No frames. So let's see. I need to get... Uh, Thank you guys for being so patient with us. Yes, thank you, thank you. I apologize. It was right before we started. I was like, I need to reboot, but we didn't have time. So that's uh, just a bunch of software has been running last couple last day or so. All right. Well, um, can somebody grab for me and paste it in the chat if you don't mind? It's one of the moderators, the new, the new URL, not just the slash live thing, uh, and that way I can, I can update everything as far as the stream goes. Anyway, anyway, okay. So everybody's good to go. Looking good. I'm seeing the comments. All right. Let's see. So yes. Um, any other any old super chat questions that was in the other one will not be able to see that. Actually, let me go back to this one. This is where we should be. Hey now. All right. So let's see. And uh, Streamlabs. Anything? I think there was another Streamlab earlier. Let me double check before we move on uh, Jimmy P thank you I didn't see a question for the donation and I saw it was Ethan in here Ethan hunt yes one I think we got that one Ethan another Ethan okay so Ethan hunt thank you Ethan we speculate here that Melisandre's magic might re magic didn't revive John but perhaps the blood in the fire river just jump-started it if John is the prince that was promised he couldn't die yet bittersweet after the prophecy was fulfilled John's wounds open back up huh now that's interesting um, I don't know. That's that's cool. I don't know. It depends on the whole thing. If you think like magic's going to come back to the world or disappear, and is that included? You know what I mean. Or once it's done, is it done? So that's a that's a cool thought. Uh, I, I don't know though. After John coming back, you would think he wouldn't die again at least until unless it's saving the world type right. of thing. So I don't think he's going to like die in a regular old <clears throat> battle or whatever. I've been seeing some other people who were saying he could like die over die and come back over and over and over again. That's gonna be like some power he has. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I don't. That would kind of take away from the, the I, initial. I agree. One. But I yeah, agree. what we were talking about before, if you hadn't seen uh, anybody watching, hadn't, they don't know what, what uh, he's talking about. Is we, we mentioned like, did Melisandre really do that, or was it just a, did it just happen? Like she said the words and walked out of the room, and then he popped back up. Was it her? Was it her fire magic? Was it the Davos? Some people say Davos. Yeah, I know. Because he just kind of stopped and stared at him and like wished him to come back without saying anything. And that's So Davos is Azor High, right? You know? So, um, <laughs> Carol Brown is in the house There is now, Carol I Brown. And uh, and Carol, I'm not sure if you, we, we mentioned, I don't, you probably didn't see it before, but Lala or Carol, if somebody could grab me the URL uh, of this video, I don't, I don't have time to do it without sitting here unless James wants to talk for a few minutes. Oh, of course. And paste it in the chat for me or something so I can update because like the likes thing and the viewers will not show up right unless I change that URL um, which is not a big deal but I'm just kind of a perfectionist when it comes to these trying to get these things right that's why I hated to keep going with the other one that was so bad so if somebody could grab one of those grab the actual URL for the new one I would appreciate it just paste it in chat I'll be able to see it there we go okay so let me Carol, you missed me. Thank you, um, Lala. Getting misty eyed earlier. And yeah, I don't we, think you'll be able to see it on the other video. Yeah, I don't know. We're not. It's hard we'll to see. It's hard to tell. Okay, once. Uh, if you got anything, go go for it, and I'll just update this really. quick. I was going to mention the costumes, um, man. The costumes were really on point. I mean, I mean, from the little babies running around in, in dragon pajamas, all the way to. Uh, one one who won the costume yes, contest. That was very very cool. And uh, they spent months on that costume. Um, let's see, there was a Jon Snow look alike. He really he really uh, had the faces down. He said he spent hours and hours. Oh in the yeah, mirror. practicing in the mirror. Yeah, that was and, very cool. Um, let's see, Night King came in third. But um, I must say, Carol, I think memory serves me correctly. She called like. She guessed like five of the top six, something like that. They were great, great costumes. Stage was full. 
Memory yeah, uh, one one was was pretty damn cool. He was on stilts. He was on them stilts. I know he was hurting. <laughs> Guarantee it. He didn't take it didn't take long for him to uh, to sit down when I first saw him. Um, but then he had to take a lot of pictures. Everybody was wanting a picture with him, so that was very very cool. Okay, one more little thing here for viewers, and I will be done. I apologize, guys, for all these technical issues. But then. I'm just trying to get everything straightened out because once this is a video, I hate not, you know, I hate people to turn it on and it's not, it's not right. You know what I mean? So, uh, especially the last one, we went through that whole list of people. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know if it's going to even be seen. I know everybody heard it live, and that's that's fine, but it's just like, uh, all right. And uh, let's see, one little thing here, to just. Yeah, and I was just gonna say, um, you know, meeting some of you guys like the first day while you're doing that, you don't have to, I guess, think out loud or whatever. Uh, remember when we first got there and Mama QB and Carol yes, were there, yes. and they're both from DC and didn't know each other till con. I mean, it's really cool. And then we met Doc Holiday, and he came over a few times and hung out with us. Really, really cool people. Uh, I just. You know, I, I okay. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Echo. Oh, Ion Tron Echo. Okay, I think I got it now, guys. I just Paul or just muted that, so the Echo should be gone now. They're echoing each other. Yeah, I think uh, I think I had this other thing open really quick. I apologize, guys. It was probably playing into itself, so should be gone now. Uh, it's, it's, it'll catch up here in about 20 seconds. Cool. Okay, so there, there's the first one. Yep. Oh, there's Tarzan. He's back. Rock and roll. Okay. All right. So everything should be good. Everything should be good. We should we should have 310 viewers, 68 likes on this new URL. Okay. So no echo. Good to go. Okay. I'm so sorry, guys, to get all have all these technical issues, but it was my fault. I should and have took taken an extra few minutes to get it fixed before we started. And I just have to say also that same that first morning. Remember, uh, Mimi Got Fan gave us. The plush animals gave you a Riddick yes, lookalike. Yes, yes. Thank you, Mimi Got Fan. And you know what's funny is we came in and Riddick went crazy, and uh, and and he grabbed the. He was very gentle. It was he, amazing. He thinks it's his puppy, and it, he grabbed it and sat on the couch with it and licked it. And and it looked like he was <laughs> nursing a little puppy. Not nursing it. I'm sorry, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Not. Not, not like acting like a nurse, not, at not the, nursing, not it. as a teat or anything. Oh, uh, but uh, <laughs> and and Mimi gave me a uh, stuffed teddy bear with a tie dyed shirt on. That was uh, really cool. Let's see, Amber's on fire. Paula, Smoke Screen Avenue, Patreon. Thank you, Paula. Appreciate that. I'll 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 get the email. I'm sure in a couple minutes. And actually, guys, in case uh, you know, for those of you that were here and anybody new watching and anybody that watches this when it's a video, this is the second stream. So there, we had technical issues, dropping frames. So we, we did this whole list of people, YouTubers that we got to meet and thank yous to everybody like Zach at, at Game of Bones and Hannah and the whole Watchers on the Wall, Sue the Fury, yes. uh, meeting Aziz and, and Val and Roris and everybody um, and all the other YouTubers, Tony Teflon, Sir Hunch, we went through this whole thing. And Will in the house and everything. Yeah, yes, Will for the house and, and his wife, Tina, and, and I went through every single Patreon. <laughs> so I hope that they see that. Um, and I want them to be recognized uh, publicly and, and and all that good stuff. So hopefully that's even I don't know, watchable on the other one. So I'll, I'll check it after this and see. But All right, I saw a couple things pop in. I'm on the wrong page, and I'm not on my, my, my stream page. Mike Bushnell said he ships Valrus. <laughs> Valrus. Uh, let me go to my live page. I'm looking at the, the, oh, I gig. That's funny. the wrong one here. Uh, one second, guys. Um, all right. Uh, actually, I need to do this. Uh, go to here. Okay, hold on one second. Uh, I saw Carol Funk in the house. I see you grabbed that question, Carol Brown. When he uh, gets back to the screen, we'll check okay. it out. Okay, now, now I'm on the right one. I just want to make sure I can see the Super Chats, guys. I apologize. Okay, uh, we should be good to go. All right, let's see. We had Shiny Raven. Uh, thank you, Shiny Raven. What do you guys think about the game ball possibility of Zombie Mountain versus, uh, I guess, White Hound? Mm -hmm. or, okay. No, I guess. Or, whoa. What? I don't... Oh, like, a white hound. Yeah, I don't like a, the idea of a white hound, yeah, but I see where you're going. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, like d dead versus dead. Yes, sir. That's a that's very cool. I don't want to see the hound as a white though. Me um, either. 
Yeah, that would be. But then, but it, then I, I don't think that would happen because if the hound turned to a white, he wouldn't have a mind to go after the mountain. The hound has such. A but other people have, have brought up the possibility of maybe if the night king gets that far south at some point, could he control the zombie mountain since he's technically dead? Yeah, and we've talked about that maybe a couple times. So maybe it's that. the hound versus a white mountain in a sense, you know, in True. that way. If that mm-hmm. happens, um, that'd be very cool. Uh, also, Dallas Robinson, thank you so much. Uh, who do you think that there will be the next start to die? Mm, um, I, I think. Go ahead. Go S- for it. Sansa. I, yeah, I mean, I would guess right now, I would guess either Arya or Sansa. Um, I don't. Don't say Arya. I, I just, I don't know. It, it depends. It, you know, the whole pack thing, the pack survives. You know, will she rejoin her pack? and Or does that mean in a literal sense where she lives out the rest of her days in, in Nymeria? Now, I know that wouldn't be in the show. But the book, she is a ward. Do you want to end the whole thing now? Because uh, the questions <laughs> come in a lot about Arya is alive now. She's not the wave. Oh, yes, yes, yes. To go ahead and preemptively <laughs> just to preemptively stop that. Um, yes, I don't think I don't think this is the wave. Um, and Arya's actually dead. It wouldn't make any sense. She wouldn't know what to do. She oh, I to, agree. Yeah. To come back to Westeros, and she may know the list, but she wouldn't just go carry it out for her and go back home. And we know in season seven she's going back home due to the trailer and stuff. So, uh, uh, let me double check Streamlabs really quick. Let's see here. Okay, I think we're good there. All right, just um, check the moderators; they've got questions. I think Carol Brown. Carol grabbed a question uh, from Chris Davis. Q and A: Will Bran warg into the mountain, and if he comes north like he did with Hodor? Is he reanimated and not? Is he reanimated and not dead? And is simple-minded for the most part and follows orders now? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think. Uh, oh, you mean the, yeah, the mountain? Now that's a possibility since he's technically dead or whatever and essentially mindless. That's a possibility, I guess, if he's weak-minded. But um, I don't think he could if it was. I thought you were saying the hound at first when I saw that. I saw the hound in my head. Um, right. <laughs> Because I was going to say, you know, it's it's probably impossible because Varamir Sitskin tried this in the books and didn't succeed, and he was a very very powerful ward or skin changer, I should say, to be technical. Um, so, eh, uh, I guess. But uh, in the books, the mountain may not even have a head, so I don't know if they need a head or not. Or that's why I think the magic is is similar, obviously, kind of this northern ice magic, but it's necromancy and it's not warding. So that's why I don't think the Night King is warging or skin changing all these dead people i agree because a lot are just bones mm-hmm. so it's got to be a magical reanimation type yes. thing uh let's see and here. i think she had another one about i didn't see what it was but it <laughs> said will we ever see john ward not like be asleep or whatever um well, yeah actually warging yeah, versus yeah. a uh, wolf dream mm-hmm. in the books i do think so in the show i'm not sure i, I think with john they could introduce that this late as like part of his i think so too part of with, his abilities hmm. but i don't know um it, you would think they would at least have hinted at that with a wolf dream or him waking up or you know slightly you know, maybe seeing through ghosts for just a second something to kind of hint at that like in the books that happens so would i would bet against it in the show as far as warging unless again it comes back to the whole targaryen Stark the, thing, warging a dragon. That's what I was Because that fits say. John better than it fits Bran to me. Yep. Uh, Lala Gig has a question from Stacy27. In Q&A, Chris and James, do you get a, did you get a chance to meet any stars, any funny stories from Khan? Uh, a lot of funny stories. Mm-hmm. I, I won't <laughs> mention any personal stories, uh, for, but yeah, a lot of funny stories. I did not get a chance to meet any stars. I mean, we did see Ramsey uh, on stage. Yes. But I didn't personally. I know James went to a few panels at, the, at least the last day. Uh-huh. I didn't. Uh, I didn't go get to go to any panels. Uh, I was actually on a panel. Uh, Val and I, and I believe it was uh, Aziz and Roris on the Old Gods panel, which was a great panel. But it was exactly the same time as the dead characters all together, and I wanted to go see that. We all did, but our room was still but packed. Who was the cast member that you met? That's kind of a star to me. Uh, yeah, well, that's true. Yeah, I mentioned I meant to mention that in the opening when we did the first stream that failed uh, miserably. Um, Steve Love. Uh, me and Val got to finally meet Steve Love. We were supposed to be on a, a, a panel with him the first day. His schedule got mixed up, too, so he wasn't even there. Okay. So me and Val go in, and, and it's just it's another lady, and we, we got to meet her and, and just jump right in, basically. But we finally got to meet Steve Love. If you guys don't know Steve Love, um, he was on Jimmy Kimmel Live doing Jon Snow impressions with a couple other people, uh, with Kit Harrington judging them. Oh, that would be tough. And then he got a call from Dan and Dave, and, and he wanted, and they said, "Do you want to be on the show?" So he's the one that got you know the whole uh, finger up the butt, <laughs> and then 
got his damn head cut off with an axe by the hound after Brother Ray died. So he so, played a part of the Brotherhood who killed the the. the so uh, they do brother. grab people like that and put them apparently, in the show, kind of like uh, didn't, didn't Walking Dead let people make cameos and as, stuff? as as walkers and stuff. That's yeah, really so, a cool idea to do that. Yeah, if anybody wants to get, I a have hat, a beard. Yeah, you have a beard. Exactly. Put us in there. Exactly what I was thinking. Uh, so yeah, Steve Steve was very nice. He was very cool. Me and Val got to meet him, and he like immediately followed us on Twitter and subscribed to the YouTube channel. And he says he's going to try to start doing more YouTube content because he hadn't done some in a while. But he also did some stand-up comedy, I believe, one night because there was some balls cool. and dances and stuff and in, 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 in concerts as well. Uh, I've met so, a, lot, a lot of people who seem like stars to me, you know, just the YouTube personalities that I, I yeah, know man, as yeah. a newbie. And that, that was very odd for me, like signing things and, and stuff. Like people had like had me sign books. Like I didn't write the book. It was very odd for me. You know I, what I mean? It was cool, but it was it was odd. It was super cool. I had I had y'all sign my book, you know, <laughs> yeah. just to give me some good juju. Yeah, uh, but yeah, it was fun. Yeah, and and yeah, feel free to ask more questions about Con guys and season seven or or whatever Game of Thrones stuff. Um, also, super chat from is that Tiz Moy? Um, what do you think the White Walkers end game? Uh, uh oh, we're about to have a drinking game party. Um, <laughs> Check out A Dragon Raised by Wolves, and uh, that's what we talk about. We mentioned that in there, what we think their end game is. Uh, well, we, we parts think, one through four. Yeah, parts one through four. <laughs> that needs to be a separate thing. Two <laughs> double shots. Um, and, by the way, Proto Stark, uh, just, for, yes. uh, just to throw that out there. Um, we talk about that there, but basically, in a nutshell, we, th I th we think that they, they're responding to John because it kind of fits the timeline. They were acting before the dragons and all that stuff. It about 14 years seems right to start building an army and getting Craster's uh, donations. There you go. <laughs> so uh, we go in that in there, and actually a lot of people have been asking about that, and I thought it was a good idea. Somebody mentioned we have a lot of new viewers since we did a Dragon Raised by Wolves. Yeah, really. So really. I may actually re-release those, maybe in the even shorter parts, and cut them up and kind of remaster a few things as far I as screenshots and re-release that series and then we'll probably update with a part five maybe after that, season seven that'll be super cool so i think we might i may, i think i may do that but um i'll just say this in there we talk about you know they may not be as evil so to speak as we think or their their intentions might not be what you think yes Right, they are. They are they're, evil. They're evil. They're <laughs> yeah, doing bad shit. That's horrible. A lot of people. Let me let me say this real quick. A lot of people will say that, like you know, uh, George R. R. Martin, he don't write about evil characters and good characters. He you know he breaks the tropes. Yes, he breaks the tropes, but he he doesn't overuse them. That's it. There are straight up evil people in the show. Yeah, or in the books. Dramsey is one. Joffrey, the uh, good, good White Walker. The, when he, when the White Walkers are concerned, though, you almost have to look at it from their point of view. When you talk about a Joffrey and a Ramsey, oh, exactly. it's, it's a little it, different feel, you it, know? Exactly. Uh, also, Peach, thank you, Peach. Uh, Chris, can you say Imp's Delight and Amp's Delight for me? Okay. Uh -huh. I just did. Imp's Delight, Amp's Delight. <laughs> I've heard them say, I, I've, I've read them <laughs> say that in the uh, comments before, that every time you say Imp's Delight, they hear Amp's Delight. Oh, they hear, okay, Amp's Delight. Mm -hmm. Okay, Imp's Delight, Amstel Light. There you go, that? perfect. Uh, Amstel, is that better? Uh, I, know, I'm, I, I know I talk fast and I talk loud because I can't hear. Uh, let's see, Nerd Factor. Thank you, Nerd Factor. You, you got that, where did it go? You get that Tennessee hot chicken, damn it. No, I, I did not. I, I did not have it. a chance to get any hot chicken, uh, honestly. I was, told to, I was told to get some too while I was there. Yeah. Um, I also saw him. So I'm sorry, I wasn't trying to cut that off. No, no, no we didn't. We no. didn't. Uh, uh, I really don't like a lot of hot stuff. You know, I can only take. I, I do, but it was just more of the rush thing. That's oh, all yeah. it really was. We couldn't leave there, you know, to get to to eat somewhere else other than at the at the actual convention center, and we didn't have time to like run across the entire place to find different you know restaurants. So. I just, uh, when gonna, Nita, oh, I'm go ahead. sorry, I was just going to mention, I saw over there in the comments, somebody said they would buy a Proto Stark shirt. Yes, that's that's coming um, very just, soon. I hope so. We very soon. We talked about it. That's a Proto Stark shirt is coming very soon. I'm just trying to, like I said, we had issues with the with Teespring and my hats. They're not available right now for, apparently I, caught, I stole my own logo. Sure did. I stole my own logo, so they took my hats down and uh, off that campaign, even though the same logos on every other shirt, including like this one. So yeah, um, a Proto Stark shirt is coming very, very soon. 
Uh, also, Wendita7, mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Uh, there's almost no descendants of some of the house Targaryen is over, it, of the houses Targaryen is over. Danny can't have children leaving John aside. Same Starks, Baratheon, Martell's Tyrell. Yeah, but I think Danny will be able to have a child. Um, I think we got that in the end of Dance with Dragons. She was bleeding again. Mm -hmm. So I think that's kind of what that was saying. And I think um, it may be the in the show, they'll probably go the route of the whole John Danny thing. And, and I'm assuming the books too, because they don't know their kin yet. And that'll be kind of the tragedy of that, I think. Mm -hmm. So I think that will change. Uh, and then she will have the ability to raise up these other, you know, as far as other houses like uh, Baratheon, for example, Gendry. Uh, or Edric Storm in the books, perhaps, whatever. And and they will be basically raised up in Baratheons and kind of reestablish those houses. She will need those political alliances. Sure will. All righty, let's see. Cat Lover, I see. Cat Lover 1981, Q&A. Are the children basically like immortal since Leaf is, is one we see make the first White Walker, or are they just really long-living and don't age? Uh, yeah, in the show, they're making them like, they lived for a long time. They live about 200 years in the book. So Leaf should not have been around when the first White Walker was made. That was a show thing to kind of keep it, you know what I mean, simple. So there wasn't a different person that you were kind of aware of as far as the children of the forest. So yes, in the books, they do not live that long. She was not been alive 8,000 years. Yeah, exactly. They do live longer than men, but they are not immortal. Uh, let's see here. Nerd Factor $2. Also, only 117 likes with 410 watching. Hit that like button. Yes! Thank please, you, thank yes. you, Nerd Factor. Yes, hit the like button and please subscribe to the channel to uh, and click that damn notification bell. Even though apparently sometimes that don't work, um, but you, you'll have a better shot of getting notified. Otherwise, they're not going to notify even if you're subscribed. Uh, they'll notify maybe five percent of the people. So be sure to subscribe. And I know a lot of people. Again, I say this every week. Watch YouTube without an account or not even logged in. But take a second to do that. It would be much appreciated. Um, Let's see, we talked about this last week, but I'll mention this again here. I saw a question from The Bridge. Which actor or actress is the most talented in, in your view? Uh, uh, Theon Greyjoy, Yes. in my opinion. He yep. is, uh, is, he's, he's played three one. or four different characters throughout this transition. He's outstanding. I mean, yeah. just without a doubt. And, 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 and Tyrion, Tyrion. Yeah, but, and I forgot to mention this one last time we talked about it, uh, Cersei. Uh, she's, she's so believable to me. Like yeah. just how she can look through people. It, with that's disrespect. right. Exactly. You There's can something about her eyes. The you, scene with Olana last year when she's like, "What are you going to do? Kill everybody?" That exactly. scene where she wanted to really like choke her. You can see it in her eyes. She wanted to choke her out. Uh, let's see. Theon was in John Wick. Yeah, I have not. Uh, as uh, Drilly says, Theon was in John Wick. I have not seen that yet. I do want to see John Wick. And apparently, I guess part two cool. is coming out. Have not seen that uh, since. Uh, I always see Keanu as Neo now, so I, <laughs> he looks like another Neo to me in that. Uh, let's see. Peach, I thought Joffrey was amazing. Yeah, he did play a good asshole. He definitely did. He did. From, like, just watching him ride in to Winterfell. Yeah, the, and, the, and, look and the, little, face, the little man. grimaces on his face, and the I way he did it. his hands on the throne where he was always picking at it, yes. that pissed me off. So he, he made us love to hate him. Uh, just like Ramsey, uh, or Ewan, I guess it is. I can't ever say his name. But, for the record, everybody that met him said he was, you know, great. Oh, yes. You know, he was willing to pose in any kind of weird he, poses. And I saw, by the way, do. I don't know if you saw this. Uh, yeah, I, two proposals happened during Ramsey photo shoots. Are you serious? They walked in, two people, they're going to get a picture together, and they got the picture, but Ramsey got on his knee and then handed it over. And... People got shows how cool he is. Proposed, right yes, proposed to. Mm. As a matter of fact, Kevin from the Bat Productions on our podcast, the side effect, uh, he went in there and got a weird pose where he was like going for his genitalia. <laughs> so he was willing to do all that shit, but he was getting paid to do it. So he's very, very cool. Uh, GB, thank you. Q and A uh, for, for the super chat. Uh, yes, GB. Um, Q and A. Can the White Walkers only travel south because it's winter, or do the White Walkers bring the winter with them? Uh, thank you for the super chat donation. Uh, I think it's a little bit of both. I don't think they caused the winter for sure. I think their creation caused the winter or the seasons to be out of balance. Right. So that's what threw the, the, the seasons out of balance. They have to kind of wait for winter to do anything, but then when they do come, it makes it worse. It, they definitely, that makes sense to It me. gets colder when they're around. We know that from the books and the show. Uh, we, we, um, actually, it's, it's 
the torment who describes that very well in the books. Okay. About you don't know cold until they're near because it hurts to breathe and this type of thing. So yeah, you've told me that a few times. So it's a little bit of both. Because remember, I, I think I actually have asked you that very question right there. Yeah, you know, you, and, and you, you matter of fact, you did like a long that. time ago. Yeah, yeah, I was like, yep. You know, wondering about that. Let's see. Uh, uh, did I see a? Uh, Carrie Nevis said, Q and A. Do you think the Baramir POV was foreshadowing? I, I think it could have been. So, like, a, like I don't completely shut down the idea. I guess you're referring to the the when he died the final time and tried to we mentioned earlier tried to work a person to uh, to escape death essentially mm -hmm. and get a new body basically and it didn't work. I think it could have been. So I'm certainly open to the possibility. And if you think about it, Bran does break the rules of uh, the warging community. <laughs> so. I wouldn't be surprised if it did happen where it's something where he did, he was powerful enough to do that for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. But it, again, it will be for a good cause, even though it will kill the person or drive them crazy or whatever right. that he does it to. So, I mean, yeah, we've always said it's certainly possible. Uh, what did I just see there? A super chat from Patrick Snyder. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, what character death got you the most? Uh, to me, it was Hodor. Yes, shed tears that night. Shed. Yes. Man, tears. absolutely. Yeah. Well, um, Ned was bad enough, but Hodor was worse for me. Yeah, Ned was bad. Sure enough, but yeah, Hodor, because I, I had gotten into it enough at that time. Yeah. And that that was tough. <clears throat> and I'll tell you another one. Um, Rob Stark's unborn baby. Oh yes, that was. I didn't like it. That was. That was horrible. That was terrible. That was bad. Uh, let's see. Got a super chat from Crimson Knight. Thank you, so <clears throat> thank you, Crimson. But I don't see a question. <coughs> also, Andy B. Thank you for the super chat donation. But I don't see a question there either. So if you did have a question, please try to get it to a moderator or retype that. Uh, let's see here. Let me get. Oh, I'm not even live here, am I? What the? Uh, oh, message. Somebody caught you with Nightbot. Caught you, uh, Zueli. Or Z-Whale, Yums. Can't do all caps. Um, let's see. There's a good one for you, Mr. Pac-Man. Nom, yeah, nom, nom. I thought I saw something. I've, I've lost. Okay, there it is. Mr. Pac-Man, nom, 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 <laughs> nom. How many times uh, do, uh, do you guys think John and Danny will marry and rule, or do you think Danny or John will die in battle? Um, I think there will be that uh, kind of cliche love story, because they don't know they're related. But I don't think there will be a ruler in the, in the sense of this monarchy. I think that starts to change. So I've said before, if you hadn't seen him, uh, any of these Q and A's, I think it will wrap up the whole Aegon parallel, Aegon the Conqueror parallel. He had the throne created; she will have it destroyed via dragon fire. So that's the way I think well, it goes. Yeah, I'm. Um, I'm just. I'm having a hard time grasping on to seeing how John and Danny can fall in love. Um, it's just me, and it's just a new thing. I mean, I used to be all for it and everything, but I'm just starting to, with with everything going on around my, the way it's so severe, how that can get mixed in, you know, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I think it's just one of those things that will happen, you know, just by chance because they're. And they I spend understand time you can't together. really help some things, yeah, right? Right. Know? But yeah, with all the chaos going on, yeah. you think, okay, I ain't got time for this, but it just kind of happens and. It's like we may not live tomorrow, type of thing. That's almost a good way like to they, put it. almost like they, you know, Robert tried to justify to Ned about Wyla. That's you know, like yeah. we didn't know if he was going home. That's You're too hard on yourself. Really so good way to put it. That's the way I took took the. Took we were at war, Ned. <laughs> yeah, making the eight. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right, I saw another. Super I know about chat. passion. Yeah, Seem <laughs> uh, Seemob, is that it? Thank you. Um, during rewatch, the difference in Littlefinger's voice and accent became very apparent. Do you think that's on purpose, the real Littlefinger coming out? Yeah, I kind of noticed that too. It did change a bit. I don't know. I think it was just... The actor slipping? Either slipping or maybe kind of readjusting the character to, to make it more, like, you know, to match the visual stuff mm -hmm. or, you know, I don't know. But I did notice the inconsistency there. I mean, I, I don't know. It, it's like this... He's a professional actor. I don't think he would screw up like that. But then again, they filmed so far apart. I don't know, honestly. Maybe the director starts saying, hey, let's bring it up a notch or whatever, I, honestly. But it, maybe it was uh, maybe it was on purpose. Because you wouldn't think it would be like, you just 
forgets he had a different voice. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, not a different voice. You know what I mean? It was different, different speaking, I guess. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Car okay, there. Carol's got one from Ever Curious. Okay, cool. Thank you, Carol and Ever Curious. Uh, with Bran home, he should be Lord of Winter for now, but wouldn't he? But that wouldn't necessarily make him king in the north. Would the northerners let John be king and Bran be Lord of Winterfell? Yeah, technically that's true. Uh, John could, keep, you know, he would be a lord, um, but that depends on the whole, you know, first of all, does he want it? Um, he could be technically, like there's the never been a separate king in the north, to my knowledge, and another, and at the same time, a, a lord of Winterfell. Okay. That's a title that was, Pat, Lord of Winterfell and Warden of the North was a title given from Aegon. The conqueror once the Targaryen reign started, so it would be a new thing. But technically, as John could do what he wants, he could create any title he wants, any post or position. Just like they've never had a hand in the king mm -hmm. in the north, there's never been any type of position. You know, probably like Davos is kind of his right hand man, but will he ever pin an official badge and say you're a hand of the king? No, I, I don't think so. Uh, let's see here. Bran is a peeping tom. Now, is that Mike, Mike Bushnell, right? Is that Mike? <laughs> oh, yes, Mike Bushnell. If you guys want to watch Friday the 13th and some other games, yes, absolutely. Mike Bushnell has a gaming channel. We watched him a couple, a few minutes when we could the other week before we took off. And he's playing streaming Friday quite 13th. a bit, too. Streaming Friday the 13th every night, so check him out. Mike, I played last night finally. I didn't get a chance to play the whole entire week up there. Um, and, and last night I did fairly well with Jason. I had two or three good Jason matches. I think I got six out of eight and eight out of eight and something like another six out of eight maybe. But, uh, yeah, fun game. And that's fun something game. we didn't cover in the beginning. What? Why didn't you get to play? Oh, yes, yeah, because James – no. Listen. <laughs> we, you know how he forgets to, like, get, you know, tell me to unmute. Unmute, yep. You know, it's, it's, it's his fault. So we got there and uh, realized that – the power cord to the computer was back at the house, so we were okay for that little bit of time. Yeah, because what we're going to do to, to clarify on the, in the booth, we were we were just basically we didn't have anything to sell. I didn't take shirts and stuff, so we were just like having like a live or you know YouTube playlist playing on silent, just you know, you know playing, and then like a, a live subscriber count on Streamlabs, yeah. um, not Streamlabs, but Social Blade. So we were just going to use the battery that he had, um, you know the how how uh, charged the battery was he had because we knew the charger was back at the house uh, just five minutes away. Right. It was at this house. See you, James Wright. Game of Thrones explained. Have a good one. He said he Oh, yes, brother. Uh, it good. was really nice meeting you out there. That was to cool. James Wright. James Wright. Uh, but, yeah, no, it was at this house. Yes. So that's why you didn't see us this weekend. And, there, there was no stream. Well, first of all, uh, that was the first issue. There was no. I had the the laptop that was uh, you know had the streaming software and all that good stuff and 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 the memory and stuff to do it. And then on top of that, internet, no. Oh not, yes, I know. Not even on your phone. It was I mean, terrible. it was you know you had to first of all you had to pay for it in the in the building because once we realized that there. was an issue, we were talking about using yeah, our phones. Yeah, it was like we can do a phone, but then LTE was it was like you know if you ever been to Nashville, you got main downtown Nashville, and then you got this side kind of northern Nashville where the the whole convention center is, and the internet up there on like LTE is not good. So that wasn't gonna it wasn't gonna work. It would have been worse than the stream we started a while ago. <laughs> Um, so that's what it would look like. Um, so yeah, James for, completely forgot to bring <laughs> to bring the damn AC. Don't take adapter. my pen back. <laughs> oh man, one more of those, man. One more. Uh, let's see here. Uh, did I see? Okay, we're good on the super chat. Um, Dunsfield is that Duns? That damn arrow gets in my way. Dunn's uh, field, Q&A, do you think it's possible that Arya could use Ned's face to kill Littlefinger? Um, I don't, because Ned's face is long gone. It, I mean, it's just that simple, honestly. I, I, she's got to have a fresh face to work with. Hmm. She would have to go, and, and it would be completely different in the books, but his bones apparently did make it back to Winterfell, and when I say bones, that's really all it was left at that point. So, Don't think that's going to happen with Ned. Uh, let's see. Stephen Hart does Tyrion. Uh, wait a minute. Does Tyrion's beard bug the shit out of anyone else? Time for it to go. 
Feels like I ain't seen the real Tyrion Lannister since the trial before the board and that fucking shit. <laughs> so was, I like Tyrion's beard, man. I swear I do too. I, I went back when you go back and watch season one and two. It's like no, no, don't, don't go baby face, Tyrion. No. Keep the the beard. I like the beard. I don't. Know. I like the shaggy hair and the beard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't like that fresh cut with the blonde in it in the first season of Babyface. No. Uh, let's see. Carol Brown, thank you. Carol from Night King Skywalker. Um, question is, did Hodor know his fate along with Sir Arthur Dane know his fate as well? Um, I think Hodor essentially did because he experienced that as a child. So he knew his death, but I'm not sure he like knew when, mm -hmm. but he went anyway. So I think he basically did, uh, but m maybe he didn't. Maybe during the seizure, he didn't remember that. So, I don't know. But he saw it. Right. He definitely saw it as a kid. And so, it makes you wonder when, like, you know, Bran started, you know, being a toddler and Hodor could recognize the features that he had seen in this vision. Right. It, if it started, he's like, oh, it's getting close now. Whatever yeah, exactly. That was. Or did he remember it all? Like, when he woke up from the Good Hodor, point. hold the door to Hodor, and he never had any memory of any Maybe of that not. happening. Don't even know why. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to say. Pre-programmed. But um, at, at the same time, I was telling, we were talking about before a little bit, when Make he was sure sitting, in the, when was sitting in the cave... Answer. When, you know, during the scene right before when Walker showed up. And, no, when Bran woke up from the vision and he was talking about it, he looked a little sad. Hmm. Like he was like, I, I, Willis, I saw you. Uh, you were speaking. He did. And he was like, Hodor, you know, kind of sad Hodor. You know what I mean? Yes. It's almost like baby Groot, right? Or Groot. You know, he speaks, it means something different than inflection. It's almost like a different language. Uh, so hard to say. Uh, Michael Phelps, thank you. Q&A from uh, the Super Chat. Uh, Thanks, light sir. Ringer, maybe a person in the service of Azor High, or do you think I'm reaching? No, absolutely not. Light Ringer is not a literal sword. Been saying that forever. It's more than likely uh, probably a person, metaphorically. Um, whether it's just in, you know technically in service, that's the way you could look at it, sure. But yeah, it, it's not a sword, in my opinion. I think the Nisa Nisa tale is a Valyrian steel recipe, basically. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Kyle Dubs, QA, do you think the children might have been evil, wanting to kill all men, and the ones helping the Three Eyed Raven were the resistance against the bad ones? Um, that's a good question. I don't, I don't think so. I mean, it's kind of like anything, anybody, any war. You, you know, you don't they didn't necessarily use their nuke, right? Yeah, they, 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 they screwed up by pulling the nuclear option, and that's what caused the, 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 you know, the, the seasons to be out of balance. But I don't necessarily think that, I mean, I, I guess they, you know, kind of needed to at one point if they thought they were going to be eradicated. But then again, the, the men were tired of fighting too, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. um, then the pact happened, but then the White Walkers came. So I don't think they were all evil in a sense of just uh, protecting themselves and they didn't want to fight either. So then they, because if, if that was the case, if they were going to destroy them, they would have never came up with the pact. They would have let the White Walkers unleash them then you know without warning them and all that kind of stuff am uh, I gonna help him build the wall am I gonna read like a leaf POV chapter or no. anything no. nope so you don't no. get others yeah, and we're, or no we're still in the dark it's all kind of speculation okay yeah. uh, let's see here zombie drive gaming awesome uh, I, I know this guy this is my little cousin uh, Dustin What's up, Dustin? Zombie Dragon Q and A. What house would want to be in, and why would I want to be in? Would I want to be in? Is that what you're asking? He's sitting right over here, by the way. Um, I I got to go with the dragons, man. I, I mean, I love the Starks, but I I that's just my thing. I, I got to go with Targaryen, and I'm totally Stark. Uh, let's see here. The wall. <laughs> well, you could do do both. Uh, Andy B, thank you for the super chat. Uh, do you think ice will be reforged? I hope so, man. I hope that Gendry has that knowledge from Tabo Mott. That would be kind of cool at the end if we do have a Stark surviving, whether it's John or or even Sansa or whatever, for them to, those swords to come back together. So uh, maybe that's uh, a part Gendry can play, other than just being like Lord of Storms in. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know. Um, There's gonna be several little moments like that at the end. Yeah, but the question is, how do we get those uh, those particular blades back together? You know, because Brienne has one and Jamie has one. Will they see each other again? And if so, how's that going to happen? You know, if somebody dies, is just somebody going to grab it? Who's going to grab right. it? You know, the, the, there's there's things to work out there and get them even in the same space. 
and then somebody to think about it and know. So Jamie would know. Jamie is the one that knows uh, where it came from, where the swords came from. So he mm-hmm. would have to kind of in, uh, initiate that, which would be cool. It really we would. We talked be. about him, you know, trying to helping out the Starks, but I think he's got to got to go with Cersei. Uh, let's see. Super chat from Brock. Uh, thank you, Brock. Thank you. Do you think the sword Dawn has anything to do with the end game? One of the definitions of Dawn is the beginning of a period of time, especially one considered favorable. Thank you for all the videos. Uh, I do in the books. Um, I'm not so sure, so sure in the show, um, but because I think it served its purpose in the sense of being the bleeding star. Yeah. For the prophecy of John. Yeah. So that's to me is the extent of it in the show at least. In the books, it may be a different, a whole different thing because it, you're right. It's like a new beginning. And uh, we'll see if uh, we'll see if House Dane comes into the story. One of the only uh, again panels I got to see the last day. They they were talking about that. And basically, asked that same question, and it was answered basically like you just yeah did. book and show different. Oh yeah, totally. As far uh, as heavy goes. micro grow. Hello, how you doing, man? Uh, let's see, Shelby Riggs, Q and A. What do you think about Jamie being a Zora? He's the uh, he's the consci- consciousness of Westeros. If he kill, uh, kills Cersei, which I think he will do, he has to give up what he loves most, metaphorically reborn. Yeah, that's that's true. Um, and this kind of goes into what I've said many times, that that's why I don't think it's one particular person. I mean, if it fits anybody best, it's Danny. Mm-hmm. I mean, honestly. Uh, obviously, John fits it metaphorically, but so does Jamie. So does Davos. So does, you can make Gendry fit it. You can make anybody fit that prophecy, and I think that's kind of the point. There, It's not going to be this one savior John is in the sense of getting people together, but Danny's got the firepower, literally. Right. So I think that's kind of the point of the whole thing. Uh, let's see here. Um, what do we got? 477 watching, 1127. Been going about 45 minutes. I don't know. Do you, what, what, you want to take a quick break and do another one? I know, yeah. I know we've had a one session already yeah. with the failed stream. So, uh, yeah, let's do that while we're called up. Let's take a quick little break, and we'll come back. And it's 11.27, so we'll, we'll, do another, we'll do another session. Sounds really good. All right, we'll be right back, guys.
All right, all right. We're back. We're back. We let's, are back. let's do another one. We still got 355 watching on an unannounced Thursday. Not too bad. Yes, sir. Not too shabby. Also, uh, really quick, um, thank you. I just saw the email. Thank you, uh, Paula, for a uh, new Patreon. That is a monthly pledge. I really appreciate it. Also, a PayPal donation directly from James Pendleton. Thank you so much, James. And I had a question here really quick uh, from, from Tanner. Uh, let's see. Let me make sure I see it here. Um, Tanner Roden. Uh, and thank you, Tanner, again, for the stuff you sent. I really appreciate it. And I know James did especially. I look at it every day. <laughs> um, Q&A, it's been said that, Ram that Euron will be worse villain than Ramsey. How? Ramsey will build it over several seasons, but Euron has less than two. What we have to do to pull this off? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I, I don't. I just don't think he can live up in this amount of time to show, to book Euron. Um, so him saying that he's going to make Ramsey look like a, a little kid is, I don't quite buy that. I mean, Euron's an evil asshole. We'll see if they bring in the sorcery stuff and, and the, the nightshade and all the stuff he drinks. And we'll see. I, I don't know if he can. But uh, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. The, the, the thing with Euron is this other stuff with Victorian, his brother, and all this stuff that's not mm -hmm. there. So I, I, am, I honestly don't see it. I enjoy you. I mean, being an evil story. asshole, yes. But being worse than Ramsey as far as just the pure evil of, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Because uh, Ramsey, he wanted power and everything, but Euron wants to take over the damn world. So we'll see if he portrays that. I don't know, uh, honestly. I don't know how he can do it in the show. There's just not enough time to develop him in his backstory. They should have been doing that a long time ago. I totally agree. Based on the things you've told me behind the scenes about it, yeah, I totally. So we'll, we'll see what happens. And like Damp Hair, you know, that's their brother too. They didn't even call him Damp Hair. They just it was just like a guy in the in the in the ocean, you know, yeah. baptizing people uh, with salt. So, uh, and I thought I saw really quick. Um, Okay, yeah, Lala Gig had said, I think I did answer that question. That's right. I, uh, it was... Uh, I was just pointing that one out. Okay. So, yeah, I answered, I believe it was... Uh, let me make sure... Um, uh, Crimson. Yes, Crimson Knights. I think we did get to that, correct? Um, I believe so. Uh, so, Carol has one from Amber Tilton. Q&A, what what's in the damn box? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> uh, it's behind Houndsley when he's in the Dragon Pit in the second teaser trailer. Yeah, I, I don't know, but I, I know that what I can do about it. I don't really know what's in the box. I would have no clue what's laying there. But uh, what's in the box? Give you me know, that. Come on, you know. You do the best. You know Seven, right? Seven. I mean, if you haven't seen Seven, it's one of my top five movies of all time. Brad Pitt. I love these, like, you know, he turns around and. What's in the box? You, you, he you does know, this at it, least once a month. For some reason, I'll say something that'll trigger that yes, from him. Uh, that's just a, it's uh, awesome. I just, uh, me and my cousin Chad, uh, and you guys have seen Chad probably a while back on the channel. We have been, we do this when we're together. That's all it is. It's fucking movie quotes. It popped They're out. They're hilarious um, It's together. just the way it happens. Um, old school and impersonations. Movies, impersonations. So uh, yeah, I, I, I want to know what's in the damn box too. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, Linda Stanfield. Thank you, Linda. Super chat donation. I do not see a question, though, Linda. So I don't know if you meant to type a question. And this, again, to say it, I know I've said it a couple times, but for those that want to do super chat, um, it, there's a little line right above the little donation slider. So uh, you got to type the question there. So if you have a question, please retype that and see if you can get it to, like, Carol Lala or... Or another moderator. Um, I don't think we have Jay Scar or, or the Order eighteen fourteen tonight. Uh, let's see here. Also, Crystal of Dane. Thank you, Crystal. Or is it Chris? Uh, Christoph Dane. I'm sorry. I saw Crystal of Dane in my head. Uh, hey, joining you just now from Luxem Luxembourg, uh, a tiny country in Western Europe. Hope hope you know it. Uh, cool. Very cool to see some uh, some uh, people in Europe tonight. We went a little earlier for that. Um, how important you think it is Euron's when we see it in seven, maybe in comparison to the next book? We, we just kind of answered that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just can't see him being as important. I think um, uh, he, he, he is important in the sense of, of being in league with Cersei. Cersei, has no, she has no other options. But I don't see in the show him being that big of a thing. They had to wrap this up quick because I think the entire eighth season is essentially – the war for the dawn. I mean, it's it's kind of got to be. It can't. They can't wait till the, like the last minute. I think the wall comes down in season seven, at the very last episode. In episode seven, 
And once that wall's down, it's over. That's it. It's it's go time. You know what I mean? Got so their ducks in a row. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't I don't see Euron. Um, I, I mean, I think he's going to. I think in the show, for the show Euron, he's more of a nuisance to Danny. I said that before. It's and so it's just not a clean sweep. Right. And Cersei, that, I she's, think she's in the corner. Own. She's in the corner. She has no other choice. So. Uh, let me double check Streamlabs. I know some people are still donating there as well. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Is uh, yes, uh, we have. Uh, let me double check. Wait a minute. We have another. Okay, Ethan. Okay, we got three. Okay, so we got two Ethans. Awesome. So Ethan Hunt again. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, another uh, about another got vid I've seen. Sometimes I felt like they <clears throat> haven't even watched the show. They just kept talking about the women taking over and to quote what one guy said, Brant is just there for exposition. They probably wrapped, uh, probably wrapped up the Tree Wizard nonsense in season six. Uh, yeah, no, I, no, he's not there for exposition. He's got a major role to play. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean building it. Yeah, will he be back and be Lord of Winterfell and stuff? No, he won't want that crap. And there'll be a little bit of drama with Sansa, but Bran won't want any of that shit. He's got who's he's way too big of a role. It's not going to be any I, I wrapping up the. That. We're not just going to throw away the tree wizard shit. We no. saw that in the trailer. He's going to he, he's got to spy on the Night King and let people know what's going on. Absolutely. Um, also from Dylan, uh, Dylan, thank, thank you, Dylan. You. What's so up, much. guys? I have a crazy theory. Do you think it could be possible that Danny's only purpose was to hatch the eggs uh, and bring the dragons to John and the Starks? Does that dragon have three heads, or does it have three wargs, Arya, Bran, and John? Thanks. Hmm, that's that's interesting. I, I don't think that's her only on purpose, though. Um, you you got to ask yourself, why did Illyrio give the the eggs to Danny in the first place? Do you think he ever believed even Varys uh, in in Viserys? No. No, mm -hmm. no. I mean, it's clear as day he's full of shit and lying to Viserys. Right. He was never going to be king. They knew Danny was a special one. And how they know that, well, I don't know. We don't really know a lot about her past in the books. Right. So, yeah, I, I don't mm -hmm. think it's just there to bring to, to the Starks. Uh, it's always been Targaryens or Valyrians that are dragon riders and that kind of, kind of thing. A lot of people, I think, really relate that brand flying you know you're not gonna walk you're gonna fly thing yes to him warging a dragon i mean they really yeah and and i think it um and again not that it can't happen not that i wouldn't like to see it happen but i think it would more or less john would have more of an affinity i think i think so and i think it's more or less the brand thing is the crows you know not just the wolf Yes, you know, the crow. and, and, and you just saw it in season seven in the trailer. In the trailer, there was multiple crows or, or, or ravens there, and you saw the little flicker of white in one's eye, really close to the camera. He's obviously spying on the Night King, or somebody, or at least they made us think that with the Night King looking up. But he's definitely controlling all of those. And anybody control more than one, they got some skills. You know, more than one animal at a time. Yeah, uh, wizard so, shit is not over. That's right. So thank you, Dylan. Also another one from Ethan. Really hope I don't bug you with all my questions. Uh, no got friends. Uh, this is the only place. This is why I started Brother, the YouTube channel. Absolutely. This is why I started this channel. <laughs> You're uh, because, not bugging anybody. No. Uh, so also, I love Aegon's conquest spinoff. What do you think the sister wives thing would be too weird for the primary character on TV? Yeah, I mean that's true, but I don't know. It's you know, it, it, I could see it, but uh, I, I don't think HBO would have a problem with that. You know, it's we've seen Cersei and Jaime twin cest. Yes. So yeah, I think that prepared anybody that. Uh, for any kind of thing like that, so I don't think it'll be a problem at all. But just to make a point, to Ethan, uh, no, sometimes it may feel like we take a while to answer your question because he'll check Streamlabs, we'll see your name, and think we've already answered the question. Yeah, that's, you do. That's the only thing with multiple questions. Yeah, brother. that's it. That's it. Um, let's see. Q and A dragons. Uh, let's see, T Tismoy, I believe. Uh, I lost it. There it goes. Q and A dragons can die, but can they also be turned into whites. We just don't know. Um, we'll find don't know out. how that works. I think we know they can die. They can die with bolts to the eye, like in the books and stuff in the history. But uh, we don't. We never had. What about a, lances a, to the mouth? Huh? What about lances to the mouth? I, I, I like know. what you're saying about that. Uh, yeah, I think that's Jamie trying to because he's he, he's not going to have a lance for a person. I, I agree don't feel. totally. So he's going to try, but yeah, they can die. We just don't know about the white thing. So I, I don't know. That's uh, that'd be interesting. Um, Carol Brown has one from Michael Smith. Q and A, Chris, what was your favorite panel that you were on from Australia? Great question. Thank you, Michael. Uh, 
I loved them all, honestly. The the funnest, the straight up funnest was was the Roarest, and we did a panel. And I don't want to mention the name of that because this is going to be a series on her channel. Mm -hmm. But let's just say it was about parts unknown of uh, Westeros and the surrounding areas, and that was really a fun panel. It was just more of a kind of laid back uh, Val Roarest, and, and and this was all Roarest. She put it together, so Val and I were with her, but. I really enjoyed every panel. Um, I really enjoyed hanging out with uh, Val and Aziz and Rorist on the Old Gods. Mm -hmm. That was a uh, because my you know if you've watched videos of mine you know the Old Gods thing. That was kind of what we were discussing like who are they what are they you know I think it's basically Bran now. Um, Blood Raven was an old god essentially, and I'd said in that as a matter of fact you know it's not that the children didn't believe in you know like because the, they have a whole society but not all of those people are green seers right. So they probably believe that their magic comes from gods too, because they they're they're the nameless gods of the rivers and stones and all that kind of thing of nature. So um, that was fun, and uh, all of them. I was just honored to be there. I'd like to make a point too uh, for those of you who weren't there and don't know the the panels were interactive with the audience. The yes. audience just raised their hand and they would get picked. And uh, Chris came back and said, "These live streams." Got yes. him prepared for that. Absolutely, because I this is this was my first con ever, um, kind of thro the first con of Thrones ever, and uh, we walked in there, and it, the only difference was everybody was actually in the room, and yeah. with a microphone and a cute little card that it was just a little card in front of you like that right there. That's cool. Uh, and uh, we, we those little water things, you know, and everybody's just piled in in a standing room only, honestly, in, in the back. So it was very, very cool. And uh, so that's where I met a lot of, of you guys as well the first time. So I, I enjoyed them. I so enjoyed these rapid fire part. questions, you guys, and it really, it got him ready for that. It was really cool. Yeah, it was. That's, that's what I told James. It was like, wait, this is just the same exact things we do every week on Sundays, except uh, we were just in the same room. Um, so I hope it came off that way anyway. So. Let's see here. I thought I saw Andrew Smith. Thank you for the super Thank chat. Thank you so much. Uh, Andrew, I don't see a question. So I don't know if you meant to have a question, but if you did, please retype that and try to get to Carol or Lala gig. Uh, Lava Dog Drink. I don't know. Did I say? I didn't say Proto Stark, did I? You just did. <laughs> I just did, though. Uh, let's see. Um, there's Vol Guy 10. Uh, any word where the next cot will be? Um, Yes, but I'm not saying a word. I'm not saying a word about it. Uh, I can't. I can't. Um, but I, I, like I said, in, uh, if you wasn't here, we did a previous stream for about, I don't know, 30 or 40 minutes that kind of failed. We were having technical issues. That's why we have a new one going on now. But I did, uh, and then we, and hopefully people can see that when they watch that at least. Cause we, we thanked everybody. We talked about everybody we met. We talked about people that we wanted to thank, all the it's YouTubers. Terrible. YouTubers that we met, and I think Zach and Hannah from on Game of Owns, and you know Watchers on the Wall, and Sue the Fury, and 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 Oz, you know they, their whole team that put this together. I was honored to be a part of it, so I hope they can see that and it's not too. jumbled up audio mess. But uh, yeah, that it was. Uh, I, got, I did get to uh, hang out with Zach quite a bit, um, the guy who put all this together from scratch. And uh, so I won't say anything that, that we talked we talked about. Uh, that's uh, that's not on me. Doc Holiday, there's Doc Holiday. Awesome. Good to see you uh, virtually again. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, Carol Brand. Oh, okay. Carol saying four hundred fifty nine. Watching. Get those numbers up. Hit those likes. Yes, yes. Thank you. Yes. Hit like and subscribe, please. Uh, I, I will say this. Me and Roris were talking earlier. You know. My channel has been way, way, and I know I, this week it's been down because we didn't haven't done any videos being gone. Mm -hmm. But the views are like, you know, these super chats is what's keeping me, you know, alive. Honestly, right, uh, it helps out. So, um, yeah, uh, you know, just share, man. Just share anything you, you think people would enjoy. Social media, wherever um, forums, hang out in. I don't, I don't know. I don't play around on Reddit, but like Reddit, obviously, a lot of people play with, and they got. A song of Ice and Fire and Game of Thrones subreddits and all that stuff, but I, I, I can't go promote my own stuff. That's... Any of your friends who talk about Game of Thrones at work, tell them about it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Andrew, I see uh, Andrew Smith. I see two more Super Chat donations, but uh, there's not questions there. Um, so I don't know if you're trying to type a question. If you are, there's a, and I'm not telling you to do another Super Chat necessarily, really? but there's a line right above the slider, the donation slider, where you pick the amount that you type the question. 
But if not, try to type it in the chat again and get it to Carol uh, or Lala Gig, please. Don't want to miss out a, a question there that you're that you're donating for. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Bob a lot Q and A. Your guys should do a smokescreen jersey slash t shirt with the name on the back as Pro Start Mod. Please help me get help get them to this. Uh, I got it. I got it. Uh, so yes, uh, a Proto Start shirt is coming soon. We said that earlier. Uh, hey, I know, I know yes. this is the second stream tonight. <laughs> So there's two separate videos, uh, or will be. So yes, a Proto Stark shirt is coming. And jerseys are not a bad idea, you know. That, yeah, that's I don't know. Cool. Uh, and you know, like I said, it depends on how this hat thing turns out. I mm -hmm. mean, if I, I if I can't, I don't know if I can do jerseys yet. But if the hat thing's not uh, resolved pretty quick, I'm gonna just do a new whole thing somewhere because I, I can't deal totally, with that. Yeah. I mean, I can't steal my own fucking you can't steal logo. Your own logo. It's ridiculous. Um, and you can't get anybody to answer. There's no person answering the phone. I tried to chat with somebody earlier. They couldn't help because it's a different department. So it's just been a damn mess. Um, Andrew, uh, thanks again. Yeah, thank you, Andrew. There's another one. Uh, I, I hope you're not trying to type a question. Uh, also, Artsy Girl, is that? Thank you. Is that art? Thank you. Uh, no question, just enjoying the bids and the chat. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, will you check Streamlabs? Yeah, I sure will. Uh, which one? Okay. Trying to refresh the wrong page. Uh, okay, we're no, good. I saw one though that you didn't answer. I don't think. On the, no, I, tr I can do it again. No, no, not, not Streamlabs. It could be uh, Super Chat. Try that again. No, uh, let's see. Yeah, oh, okay. T. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, did we? I thought we got that one earlier. No, I mean, it just came in in the last couple minutes. Oh, okay. So, Terry T., thank you, Terry. Uh, no question, but you're also meaning you both at Cod. I was Quaith. So, you did, so that's that, twice. That's twice, yeah. So Both videos. Oh, was that the previous one? Yeah. Oh, it might have so. been. Yeah. yeah. So, thank you, Terry. Thank you. It was really nice it, meeting you and your husband. It was. Well. And that was a very, very well done costume that she did. So, I yes. Have and, good and, pictures. And husband was, was, was various, and it was very well done. So, awesome. Thank you, Terry. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, what did I, I Oh, okay. Carol had one from Chief. Uh, well, I'm trying to grab it. Sorry. Uh, Chief at large. Uh, Q&A, do you think John will die again? Um, in the end game, uh, maybe. Uh, here it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Dragon Raised by Wolves. Parts one through four. Yes. Um, we do talk about that and give a couple options, but I don't think he like he will this season like he's you know, I don't think that uh it, it will cheapen it will cheapen the resurrection if he dies several times or something like that. It so, really it really does. So I, whole I don't cliffhanger and everything. Yeah, it would it doesn't make any sense thematically. Um I mean I could see in the very, very end, yes. Um, but I don't I don't think uh no problem, Chief at Large. Uh, let's see. Uh, Muse says, uh, hey, Muse, for, uh, sorry I hadn't seen your name tonight. Um, do you guys have press badges, badges at the con? Uh, no, we didn't have press badges. Actually, we could have gotten one, I found out, to, uh, after it was too late. And we could have done interviews uh, with actors and stuff, but we did not get that. Um, I found out like the last day. That I could have actually just walked in there and got one, apparently. So we did not, but we had vendor badges, which gave got us access everywhere, um, yes. except for like separate. Like I wasn't, I wasn't paying for an autograph and picture. I right. Just, but uh, yeah, it gave us access to go wherever. Um, Night King Skywalker. I would like to see a flashback of how exactly Ned knocked down the Tower of Joy with an injured Howlin and two handed and two handmaidens. Yes. Very uh, in the books, it had to be a very small thing, uh, yeah, because he he used those stones to bury people. So yeah, I mean, I, 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 that's true. That's that's true. Well, who was really? Was there anybody there? You know, other other was there a maester there? Other handmaidens? You know, Wyla, the wet nurse was. Our, we don't know. I would like to see that too. Yes, but I sir. think in the show we're probably done with the tower. Uh. Uh, Thomas Norfleet Q&A uh, is there any reasons why Obsidian or Valyrian still kill White Walkers um, yeah I think because they were created with it 
I think that's what gave them the weakness. Uh, yep. They were, you know, dragon glass or frozen fire, as it's called sometimes by people. I think that's what gave them the weakness to it. So uh, that's, uh, in my opinion, that's it's got to be what gives them the weakness because it's actually in sure. his chest and he's his mat. Now, now can he be killed? We've talked about this in, in, in the Dragon series too. Parts one through four. <laughs> is uh. Is uh, yeah, I mean, with that in his chest, uh, and somebody stabs him with another piece, does it hurt him? Now, obviously, it does. Other White Walkers, mm-hmm. we saw Mira finally kill one. Uh, John, of course, did, and Sam. Um, but I don't know about the Night King. That's another another thing. Uh, how can he? We talked about possibly what he wants based off of that in the Dragon series. Parts one through four. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't there uh, pictures in these trailers and stuff? Uh, the group that goes up north having the spears tipped with the dragon glass and stuff. Yeah, I or mean, it looks like it could be. It could you be, kind of see a silhouette of can, it. You can see some swords. You can see some other weapons that uh-huh. I won't say that we'll see. That's going to be very, very popular. Hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, it's hard to see. You see other ones, other other weapons that do look like spears. And yeah, you got to question. Did John? Because I, I do think John goes to Dragonstone and gets some. Because Stannis said it straight out, we have tons of it. When I know what Obsidian yeah. is, we have tons of it. John, no. So I would imagine he would armor some people up with that. I think they'll have it in their pockets, all of them. Awesome. Uh, you know, daggers at least. Um, uh, let's see. Does see a super chat? Uh, yes, Dunsfield. Thank you, Dunsfield. Q and A. Thank after, you. After Jamie kills Cersei to save the city, could Danny end up forgiving Jamie for killing her father and lead them to getting married and help on carry the Targaryen line? His father almost ended. I've wondered this. Yeah, I do think Jamie can, or, or Cersei can, for, or Cersei, Danny can forgive Jamie uh, because Tyrion did tell him the reason why, and she knows her father was crazy. Right. Um, but it's still Danny, tough to take. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I it's think, not like she's just going to smile at him, right? No. Yeah, I mean for sure. But I don't know, man. That's leading uh, to to a marriage, and it's funny because Jamie's going to have to deal with the same thing with his brother. That's true. That's I true. mean, they're both in the same predicament. There. Yeah, that's true. How do you that, deal with the person who kills your father? Exactly, and and, and it's going to go down. We're going to see some. There's going to be some uh, awkwardness there, to really? say the least. But yeah, that would be kind of all three going to be in the same room. Uh, if Jamie doesn't die with the whole Cersei thing, because I do think he's got to go out at the same time. Unfortunately, there's just been so much foreshadowing. It seems to me, but I would love to see something. But anyway, the Danny. Jamie thing that's interesting because we think okay John's the only real suitor maybe even Gendry or something but once uh, in the books at least you know Jamie's already kind of broken up with Cersei she, he knows about the Kettle Blacks he knows about Lancel I'm writing this down so uh, yeah then he's once he's free of Cersei I don't know that's, that's possible it could happen let's see Lala Gig has uh, a question from um, Embers on Fire uh, Paula smoke screen I will buy a smoke screen Proto Stark okay. tie dye a dragon raised by wolves parts one through four shirt <laughs> everybody drink the whole damn bottle uh, drink <laughs> up uh, yeah that would be that would definitely got some Proto Stark shirts coming uh, and tie dye stuff but I wonder how we can do a dragon. I don't know if I can like use that or not. I don't know. That'd be cool. Uh, let's see. Dallas Robinson. Yeah, it looks like fractured empress. Uh, empress. Empiricist. Sorry. Yeah, I know. That's the is one. dealing with their neighbor, her neighbor's uh, fire alarm or smoke alarm or something. Uh oh. Yeah. That, uh, speaking of that, on a panel, we were talking about the panels earlier. Second panel, I think it was. I think it was the uh, I don't know if it was the old gods knows one the next day. It's, we get started about five minutes into it. We're, we get, we introduce ourselves. We start talking, and there's a flood warning on oh, everybody's yes. phone at the same time. I deal with that too. We've never even the talked whole about room that. like stop. You know, it was like what the hell is going in the on? Marketplace. It was just echoing everybody's yeah, phone. Yeah, so it was like a because it because it was uh, obviously humid down here in the south and the storms every night. So anyway, it, it, that was kind of funny. That's funny. I'm uh, it up. Dallas Robinson Q and A. Do you think the long night happened on both continents with both having at last uh, the heroes or high? Both have towers, walls, and legends. Uh, yes, Dallas, I do. It's heavily implied that it did, and as a matter of fact, we know that most of those, except for the last hero, 
everything else comes from from Essos. Um, from over in Ashai and beyond, you have uh, the five forts above Yt and all that. It's very heavily implied that this did affect the entire world. Now, of course, then everything was connected by an arm of Dorn. So we'll see. Um, Germ has said George R squared Martin, as I used to call him. I love that. We're watching older videos the other day, kind of cringing. Um, he said that Essos does not connect on the other side of the planet to to Westeros and the land of always winter. It would only make. It seems to me that it used to though, with the way the five forts are, and you'd have to look at a map and stuff. Mm -hmm. and I can't show you here, but um, with the way they're angled and what they're protecting, like the red waste and stuff, it seems to be that it used to maybe. So it's it's hard to say. Maybe other things got broken with the the hammer of the waters that the children did supposedly to to flood the neck and break the arm. Cool. Uh, let's see. I had one. Uh, so, La La Gig, I think, was grabbing. Okay, yes. yes. Uh, Christ, uh, Christoph of Dane. Uh, Christoph Dane, I'm sorry, from La La Gig. Thank you. Um, again, just here to promote the famous country of <laughs> uh, Luxembourg. Luxembourg. Uh, by the way, it's between Germany, Belgium, and France. Other question. Uh, Gendry in Season 7. Anything? Yes. Uh, Gendry will be back in Season 7. Uh, I'm, I won't... Uh, I don't want to spoil anything. I've not read the leaks, but I, I have seen the, the set photos and stuff. Oh, yeah. He will be there. He will be important. Danny will need that political alliance. I think he gets raised up to Lord of Storm's End. And uh, from there, I, I don't know. I think he'll be in John's party up north. Uh, watch the trailer again and look very, very closely at the scene with the 12 people in a circle. It's right there. Um, Linda Stanfield. Thank you, Linda, for the Super Chat donation. Melisandre's reaction to Danny and her dragons. That's what I want to see. Thank I want to see the Kinvara mud wrestling match, but uh, <laughs> that's apparently not going to happen. I don't know, but um, yeah, it's going to. I think it's going to confuse her more. Like, wait a minute, I just saw this in, in the flames, and yep. he. I brought him back to life, and now here's fire made flesh. You can't deny it. It's right there. Right there. And uh, I won't go too much further, only because I'm about to do a Melisandre video, and it's also going to be a part of another channel that's uh, coming probably a couple of days before the premiere. But uh, I have an idea on Melisandre but, um, and how she fits into Season 7. But yes, it's going to be interesting, that dynamic there between John and Danny and what she believes. I'll just say that I think she may finally get something right in the flames if she looks again, perhaps, after that. And then uh, I won't say any more than that as far as what may happen with her or to her. Uh, I mean, right now. Not that I'm necessarily right or know anything. It's just going to be a separate video. Uh, let's see, Christoph Dane. Uh, hey, would you read my super chat from way before? Oh, did we miss one? Uh, oh, sorry, Christoph. I thought we grabbed it. I pretty, I remember reading it. I thought. Uh, let me move up and see. Oh, we just did. Oh yeah, that's what we just was, read. Oh, okay. uh, we, 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 sorry, Christoph. We we did miss it. Yeah, they put it over in the. Somebody oh, copied no. it and put it over. Okay. Oh, they oh, 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 okay. I see. So we read the first one here, yes. and then the second one, there was two there was, in there. Okay. Sorry, so, sorry, Christoph. So she's promoting Luxembourg. By the way, everybody, it is between Germany, Belgium, and France. So awesome. Glad to have you uh, watching. Uh, let's see. I think so. We were good with Linda's was the last one there. Okay. Uh, we're reading other people's conversations. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Here you go. There you go. Uh, Tis Moy. Uh, how and when do you think the mountain will die the true death? Um, I don't I don't think the game bowl is going to... I want it to happen and I don't want it to happen. I mean, we've talked about mm -hmm. this. I want the hound to do something different. Although he could kill him and then do something different. Yeah. But, um, so, I mean, either the hound or... I think Tyrion would be awesome, but you know David and Goliath. But I don't know if that can happen. That I think he. Cool. I almost think he's got to die by dragon. Uh, I think you said that before. I actually. think it might be one of those things where you know, because Danny, you know, Danny's going to be talked in by John, which he's right to do to try. They're going to reach out to their enemies too because they need all the help they can get. It's, they got. They're trying to put her uh, inside the squabbling of houses and politics. But it might be one of those things where Danny comes in and and just just to show a, a show of strength. So it shows right speak. off the bat. Right off the bat, you know, you know. Cersei says somebody talks a little shit, and she says, uh, "Well, fuck you, Dracarys." <laughs> you <know? laughs> Out of the background. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, he's left a pile of ash. 
I, 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 I think so. I mean, it's really hard other than that to beat him. Uh, even, I mean, as good as the Hound is, he is injured, you know, so. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I still love to see the Game Bowl uh, 2.0 since we got a quick little version. Uh, Author R, Q&A. Let me stop it there. Do you think it's possible that not the white that not the White Walkers, but another character might be re responsible for bringing about the next Long Night, have a feeling it will be Daenerys. Hmm, interesting. I don't know. I don't. I don't think so. I think. Um, I think Daenerys. If you if you're familiar with the book stuff in Quaith, when she stays with her and keeps kind of reminding her, remember who you are, Daenerys Targaryen, and all that stuff. I think that refers to, and then you kind of combine that with the show where she didn't touch the throne. Now, she chose not to touch it because she heard her dragons, but it's like, um, is she supposed to be queen? Mm -hmm. Or is she bringing, Is she supposed to save the world? So I think that's, that's kind of what that means from Quaith. Like, you're, remember who you are, the, remember who you are, the dragons do, and all that kind of thing. And then you get the, the house of the undying vision, not touching the throne. Of course, there's snow on it. Right. Is that saying you're not supposed to be the queen? You're supposed to save the world. So... That vision, yeah, that's always... Yeah, you know, and a lot of people see the other vision where going north of the wall, like, okay, she's going to die because, you know, that's where Drogo is and Rago, and, and that's certainly possible, but you got to remember the other side of that. She did go north of the wall in that vision, go beyond the wall, which represents kind of death, I think, you know, and then in the tent, they're there. Obviously, they're both really dead, mm -hmm. but she chose to walk away and realize it wasn't true, so you got to remember that piece, too. Yeah. She did shoot, realize this is not real and walked out willingly. So she may avoid death in that way. Uh, let's see here. I thought I saw Andy B. Thank you, Andy B. Thank you. Do you think we'll see Dark Sister again? Was the sword Mira had from the cave? Um, I, I mentioned this before and actually in last year's uh, that episode review. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't think we will necessarily in the show. Um, but uh, I, books, I, I, do, I do think the, the Valyrian old Targaryen house ancestral swords will come into play in the books again. Arya could get it, Dark Sister. Um, but the mirror thing, they didn't make a big deal. It was odd there was a sword laying there. Right. But then you thought you, she was pulling Bran and running. She didn't use any, a sword again. But the one against the tree in that scene where Bran drinks the blood was, in fact, binging the sword from season one. He it's just, heartbreaking, I know. He, he had just leaned it against the tree while he was fixing rabbit blood stew or whatever. So, um, but not so in the show. I don't think so. I mean, I I would hope so, but I, I I would love to see that. But I don't think so. Books, yeah, I think so. I think we'll see. We'll hear some more about the the Targaryen swords. Uh, let's see here. What was this? What is this air quote thing? I I think I might be doing it a lot tonight or something. One, two, three, four, air quote, come on, do it, please. Yeah. I... <laughs> uh, let's see. Carol has a question from Matt M. Q&A, could Arya having Littlefinger's dagger in the promo footage be an intentional misdirection, kind of like Shay being on set in past season? Seems too spoiler for them not to catch. That's a good point. It, that was, They did troll us that last year. Uh, Val and I did those <laughs> predictions last year. And uh, we saw that, and we were like, you know, God, you know, it could be a red, because we had heard about Kinvara. Yeah. It, it could be a, a red priestess, like, making Tyrion see shit to kind of influence him, just doing something. You, you told me that. But all it was was Dan and Dave that she'd visit, and come on by, hey, put this on the way to them people out That's... there taking pictures from two miles away. And she wasn't in the damn show. So crazy. So, yeah, very possible. It's That's very possible. Because, um, yeah, it does seem a little too obvious for to strap that and but now I will say this now I know a lot of people have theories that you know that I'm not I'm I'm pretty young as a YouTuber I guess mm -hmm. about two two a little over two years so but one thing I did say and I know we said this last year sometime and I think it was in a Dragon Race by Wolves parts one through four that Cat's Paul would come back into this thing absolutely it kind of helped start the whole thing so yeah that you heard right here first mm -mm. So Cat's Paul uh, kind of helped start this whole thing, and I think it may help end it. And that's not necessarily the end game with the White Walkers, although it could be, but definitely the little finger drama about the War of the Five Kings and all the shit he started between the houses. Dude, 
You're gonna have to steal the hat thing again, real quick. I guess another person uh, likes, yes, likes my what, hat. And yeah. The, so yeah. So the hat thing uh, again. So last night, out of the blue, after the hats have been on the website for three or four weeks, because I ordered these hats before we went to Con of Thrones. Uh, last night, a buddy was going to order one because um, I don't have them laying around the house. Uh, and uh, I was trying to get the hat to show up as the featured item on that particular campaign. Right. But I, there's no really way to do that. But anyway, at the same time, the hat just disappeared. It disappeared. Uh, the whole campaign disappeared. And it said, uh, the email popped in two seconds later and said um, uh, it was basically off, based off my content. And then when you go read the, the little link in there, it was like about copyright stuff. Yeah. So apparently I stole my own fucking logo and now they took my hats down. So I have a ticket in to get that resolved. So right now the hats are not available. All the other shirts are there, still there. They're fine like this one, the regular logo shirt. And then Just, the house sigil t-shirt. The logos are all over. The logos are still the same, but the hat's not available Coffee right cups. now. So I'm trying to get that resolved. Yeah, so all, you can still add mugs Coffee and cups. stickers and all that good stuff to, to the shirts. Let's see. Uh, I think we've got a couple of Super Chats, I think. Um, awesome. Uh, Padgematic. Thank or, you, Padgematic. Uh, thank you. Do you get the feeling that Val the Wildling has a backstory we don't know yet or a role to move uh, play to play moving forward in the books? Um, I, I do got that feeling, but I really don't know what that could be. Um, and, and for those of you who don't know, Val is the kind of the queen, I guess you could say, of the wildlings of, of to match Raider. They have a they have a son. There was a baby swap up north because they thought John thought that they should send the baby away. They they named it Monster. Um, wildlings don't name their kids when they're uh, but they think it's a, like a curse to do so immediately. Um, so I, I don't know. It's hard to say. Um, but when I think it came on to play with uh, with uh, Celise and Shireen, like she don't believe Shireen is clean, even though she's been cured of grayscale. Okay. So uh, it, it's it's hard to say. She she doesn't believe that she can be cured of grayscale, and it seems to indicate like it's worse in cold. So it may see some kind of, and that's kind of what led with the uh, to the thing we talked about in that other series that we did. Um, that like the grayscale could be a biological weapon type thing. I know, and I still love thinking about I that. I know, man. I, it's got to go somewhere in the book. So I think that's what it points towards. I don't really know. It's it's hard to say who Val could be, but I mean, think about Man Raider. I mean, he was just a he was a member of the Night's Watch and stuff. So I I don't know if she could have been somebody from the Seven Kingdoms that went up to. Uh, I, I don't know. We'll we'll see. We need a damn book. Uh, is that Muse? Uh, yes, thank you, Muse. Thank uh, you. Just because. Thank you so much. That no question. Just because. Appreciate that. Uh, let's see. We got also, uh, is that Kator? Kator? Otto? One? Yeah, Kator Otto. Kator zero to, to one. Oh. Kator zero to one, I believe. Uh, maybe I'm reading that wrong. Kator Otot one? <laughs> yes, that too. Um, I think, uh, so thank you. I think either John or Danny had to die. And John already died, so it has to be Danny. She is the. Uh, she has this innate sense of destiny driving her forward. I think it's driving her to an ultimate act of sacrifice that will save the world. I tend to agree with that. Uh, I tend to agree because when this thing ends, he is the song of ice and fire and the only one. But maybe it's after she has a kid. I don't know. Uh, you know, or something like that. That seems to have to come into it too because they kind of make a big deal out of that and how the whole uh, her being able to bear children thing. Right. So um, we'll see how much time passes and all that stuff. I'm sure there's plenty of time in the books, but uh, I can I tend to agree with that more than John dying again, uh, and it would cheapen the whole resurrection thing. Uh, also, Christopher McMurray, thank you, Christopher. Uh, who does Cersei blame the set blowing up on? How about the Starks? Revenge for Ned and Rob. She has to blame somebody, and she isn't going to like the whole King of the North thing. Blame the Bastard King. She's not going to like that. <laughs> Correct. Um, yeah, I said this before. I don't think that people would be following her if she didn't bl uh, blame this on somebody somehow, or Jamie for that matter, because Jamie in the show would be done if he thought that it was her and Tom and died because of that, his son. So I think in the I think she she blames it on the Tyrells. Now people again will say, well, Marjorie was in there and, and, and Mace, but that I think she blames it on the Tyrells and High, and High Garden, Lady Olenna, the Queen of Thorns. And that gives uh, Jamie the the you know what he needs to go actually because I think they go take High Garden. 
Yeah. I mean, I, I just don't think she I, can. I like that idea. I, I think that gives the, the justification to go try to take sure. over High Garden. Because they were, the Lannisters were, were, they were fine with them. I mean, they didn't like each other, but they did it out of necessity. So I, that's what I think. I mean, yeah, they could try to blame the Starks, but I would say more of the somebody in the Reach, uh, in the Reach and High Garden. Right. Uh, Linda Stanfield for James. There you go. Thank you, Linda. Hi, James. What is the pin you are wearing? Okay, yeah. Uh, we talked about this in our first video we tried to do. I won this um, at the AVN Awards. Uh, no, I did not. Chris <laughs> actually, uh, Chris gave me this at Con of Thrones, and it meant a lot to me, so I brought it out here tonight and asked him to pin it on me. And it was a debacle. <laughs> a debacle. The whole damn first stream was a debacle. It's probably unwatchable. And we thanked all these people. And uh, it's going to be a damn mess. Uh, Zombie Drive Gaming again. Uh, Q&A for boxing question for James. Oh, Lord. Do you think Jeff Horns went against... Uh, what was that? Damn it, that arrow's in the way. Hold on, hold on. Manny... That actually... That hap that fight happened while we were at con, and um, I oh. haven't had a chance to uh, to review anything on that. But I have heard that it wasn't as bad of a robbery as everybody's making it out to be. So I have to check up on that. Not too sure. Uh, let's see. Heavy micro cro uh, grow. Cersei will blame Brotherhood Mountain versus Jamie. Uh, yeah, I, I can see that, too. I can see that, too. But I, don't, I still don't think, if that's the case, that uh, that justifies going to take High Garden out of the blue. Um, I don't know. But then again, she could, you know, say that this Dragon Queen's on the way to take over and kill all you people. And, you know, so we got to do what we got to do. And, and, and Lady Olenna's made a deal with her, and now they're on her side. So they could go spin it that way, too. Mm -hmm. And I see, I must not have said it, actually. This is a Hand of the King pin and uh somebody said hand of the chris so, yeah. yeah basically <laughs> and i also saw another comment that said thank you chris for your infinite wisdom and i must agree you help these oh, things. No, you, know, no, you help no. me learn so much while we're actually doing this no there's no, nothing infinite i still i'm, I'm starting to reread it read again now i just don't have much time to do it i got to get some videos out so this channel doesn't die um Let's see, a lot like Gig saying smoke screen live stream on Sunday. Yep, absolutely. We were mm -hmm. just, uh, this was kind of a, like, all right, let's 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 go live in a couple hours. We had some time and wanted to do a, a, a Con of Thrones recap and thank all these people. And Otherwise, it took the first hour of our Sunday. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So we want to do that. And like I said, I will be doing like a, a vlog style kind of Con of Thrones thing too. We've got a lot of pictures to throw mm -hmm. in there and a few little vlogging things in there. I didn't get to actually vlog a lot walking around and stuff because I was getting pulled left and right. But, um, uh, yeah, uh, we're, we'll definitely do that. And and, uh, and again, this first stream we attempted is now posted as a video. Hopefully, it's even watchable to I people. Because so. I, I don't want to, to you know, out. I don't want those people. I want to make sure to thank like all these people. And again, I'll mention a couple. Uh, all the like, like Val, Rorist, you know, my team as far as the podcast, the side effect, you know, Val, Rorist, Tarzan, Kevin, meeting them in person, hanging out uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, as far as the con goes, you know, Zach and Hannah from uh, from Game of Owns, you know, they put this whole thing together along with Watchers on the Wall, Sue the Fury, uh, uh, Oz of Thrones. Uh, so all those people, job. all the YouTubers you met, Tony Teflon, Sir Hunts, Kyle. Tony Teflon. I mean, uh, you know, it was it was awesome. And so we went through this whole thing, and, and, uh, and the audio may be all shit. I have no idea what it's going to sound like as a video. So there should be like a 40-minute a video already there from the first time we attempted this before we – Rebooted and cleaned it up. So, um, so yeah. Feel free to ask questions if you're just getting here about Con of Thrones too. Uh, that that's what this we started. That's kind of what this whole thing was about at first, at least the first half. Um, uh, Carol Brown has a question from Magnetic Rose. Con of Thrones question: What was your favorite panel? Okay. Um, as far I'll say this and let you go because you got to watch. I didn't get to watch any panels. Um, I was only on panels. I didn't have no time to actually sit down myself and watch another panel um but you did I, the last I, well day. i got there you know right not as, many not many i know there but. were two left and they were you know of course started at the same time and they're only 50 minutes so i spent about 20 minutes in one about 20 minutes in the other one and uh the one 
the the one of of those that I liked the most was when they were talking about all the uh, artifacts and yeah. you know, different swords and horns and things like that. That was really cool. Right. And as far as me, as far as if, you, if you're asking about the panels I was on, the funnest for me was the one with Roris and Val at the very the last day. It was Sunday. It was my last panel. Um, Roris put it together. Um, it was about some uh, places in Westeros, and I won't like I said. This is going to be a something on her channel, so uh, that was the funnest by far. Um, Roris is crazy as hell, uh, and the room was just having a blast. But the favorite one, as far as content goes, was the old gods. I love the old god stuff and Blood Raven and Bran and the Children of the Forest and how that what that really means. And that was one with. Um, Roris, myself, Val, and Aziz from uh, History of Westeros. Carol that, said you kicked pirate booty in that panel. I kick, uh, did. I did. I did. Did it go down good, Carol? I hope it did. I asked you this in person. I know, but you know, it was my first time, and I don't see myself on videos the same as other people do. You know how it is. Kind of like looking in the mirror. Yeah. So uh, I hope it went well. I hope everybody enjoyed it. I, at least I got a few laughs. Anyway, you know, I got the room to laugh a little bit. I think, if I remember correctly. <laughs> so. Oh my. Oh, uh, what do you say? Well, what Carol said, what happens at con stays at con yeah. or something like that. <laughs> That's right. Uh, let's see. Lolly Geek says, smoke screen. Uh, Roris posted in the, the first in the special series. Oh, she did. that. Cool. I did see a video pop up that was her, and I didn't see it. I didn't watch, see the, read the title. I didn't. Uh, so, yeah, I need to check that out. So, okay. If she's announced it, that's cool. I'll, I'll let everybody check that out. Look first. at Trey's question right above that. Uh, tr oh, well, I thought I had it lost it. Right here. Here Trey go. Lad Green, uh, QA, any chance we see some glass candles this season now that Sam's in the Old Town? Will Sam's storyline be of any importance this season or Old Town for that matter? You know, I've said this before. I do think we have to see a payoff with him becoming a wizard. Um, I mean, he it's been said twice now. He said it and then Gilly called him that. He's got to learn something, right? So I was wondering, like, will they introduce a glass candle? Because will he make it back to John physically and tell him what he needs to know with him running around everywhere? Or will he figure out a way to talk to him and that's how he can do it? So a glass candle is an obsidian candle with no flame that's lit by magic and you can send, you can, you know, send visions and get in the dreams and send talk across the world. You said with no flame, you mean no wick? No wick, no flame. There's yeah. no flame. Where do you see the visions? Well, I get, well yeah, I get... Yeah, I guess you light it. There's no wick. You don't light it with fire is what I'm saying. You light it with your oh, mind, okay. with yeah, yeah. magic. But yes. it does look yes. like a candle. It's weird. So, so, yeah, they're burning again the books, which means magic is back stronger at least, and and, and that's how you can communicate. So. I have a question. Um, how big will baby Sam be? <laughs> he, he's probably still two. I don't, I don't know. He's probably still two. He's not aging very well. I don't know. And that makes people, Like all the other kids yeah, you see. Yeah, that makes know. people question, you know, I mean, it's <laughs> – Hell, either he's going to be two or seventeen. I'm not sure. You know, <laughs> with long hair and a beard, uh, I'm not sure. It's age is odd. Uh, he's the one telling the story at the end, <laughs> not saying like everybody says. He might says. be. Uh, let's see. Okay, Streamlabs. Ethan Hunt again. Thank you, Ethan. Thank you, sir. Uh, talk. Uh, last talk before I check out for the night. Danny likes to intimidate. Uh, say John meets her and refuses to kneel at first. The shows off the dragons, but the surprise uh, he ain't scared of the dragons and aren't hostile and even seem to like John. That's exactly what I think is going to happen. If you see that part in the that trailer. Whole scenario. Yep, I don't think he'll kneel. He won't have time for it. He's going to try to explain what's going on. Um, and she will meet, he will meet Drogon. Now, he's going to be tim intimidated. Sure. He, by, um, there's no doubt. Him and Davos have never seen a damn dragon. But when, it, when, he, when she takes him to meet him or brings them or whatever happens, I think they could probably go to that cave and find some dragon glass and maybe they meet him there. I think that shot in the teaser with her, where it showed the really close-up teeth, that's the dragon. Dro that's Drogon meeting John, and they will like him. Yeah, and like it's going to be another tease, and he he won't know any different, you know. But she will be like, hmm, that's the wing bump, and yeah, like, Danny will be like, what the hell, wing bump. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be a little tease for us, and Danny may think that to be very very strange. Uh, also on Streamlabs, Bolo seventy six seventy eight. Thank, you, Thank Bolo. you, Bolo. Um, you have two questions actually. Uh, will it ever come out that Dr uh, Drogon and his brother sister did not kill the little girl? Happy birthday, Camden. Uh, oh, thank you. She will love that. Yeah, she she left the room. So um, let's see. Was that the same? Okay, it was the same question twice, right? Uh, yes. 
But yeah, I think you know, yeah, in the books, uh, you know, well, in the show too, we, we're not really sure um, uh, as far as was that actually a kid's bones? That was sad. Wasn't um, it? And uh, it's actually, Danny actually says to herself in the books, I, 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 "How do I know that was even a child? It could have been goat, or goat. I can't even remember exactly the animal, but how could have been a goat or something? It was just burned black and charred." So yeah, I don't know. Um, we may learn that um, because she had to lock him up and all that stuff because of that, and it may be that it would never even happen. So there may be something to that, but I don't remember anything else being said about it. So it may be a one-off thing. And uh, that's one thing I'll say about Con of Thrones really quick. And I know we got to get out of here very soon, unless you want to take a quick break and do another little 10, 15 minute thing. But um, after talking to Aziz a little bit, you really got to start thinking about when you're reading, especially, um, and, and I guess in the show as well, but it would be more of the earlier seasons, what is important and what is world building, right? So, and, this, and it, I've always thought this, but it, I've made, it made me think about it in a different way. Right. When something's just thrown out there one time, maybe even twice, just to kind of show you what's going on or you make you picture something, whether it's a person, place, thing, whatever, world building. It doesn't, everything doesn't mean everything, you know, I mean, everything is not a clue to something else, but that's why I have the whole thing with the God's eye and the, the, the green men and all that stuff is, it's mentioned more than once and a couple little times kind of skimmed over lightly, so it's important, <laughs> so it's it's going to come back into play. And which you said earlier, the wizard thing has been brought up twice, yes. and you're thinking it might it, be important. Exactly, you know? the wizard thing is not just like some little thing, it's a kind of a joke, it's got to be... Sam, you know, becoming a maester and not in a maester, a full maester necessarily, but learning something important. And it's got to be magical, uh, whether he does it himself or not. But I would hope he would learn how to do that, like with the glass candle thing. I think that'd be cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, Christoph of Dane, again, thank you for the super chat. So, Cersei, till season eight, what will be her role? Um, honestly, though, I think. It may be early season eight, and she plays a corpse. If anything, I oh don't, my god! I don't. I mean, honestly, I don't. I don't think she can go much further. I don't know. I, I could. I could see it doing. I could see it being something like that where she dies this season, but I'll, uh, or late or late or very early season eight. But um, I, I don't know. Um, a lot of people think she becomes the Night Queen now, um, and that would fit. It, it, would. it would fit for her to be, you know, betray everybody, end up being, you know, turned or killed or whatever. And be that queen in that sense, or that would be kind of cool. So, I, I mean, I don't know. Right now, until I have more to go off of, uh, and no book, we we'll definitely have a book. I, well, I guess before season eight, since it's pushed back, um, I would say an early death in season eight. Just my guess. I don't know. Uh, also from Linda Stanfield again. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, hey Linda. guys, magic number for the hat removal. Um, 100k, and by the looks of it, it's going to be about four years from now. <laughs> little Sam will be four years old. Yes, little Sam will be four by then. But no, yeah, 100k, and it's going to be a huge thing. It's oh, going to yeah. be bigger than the Fourth of July that just happened. Well, I mean, the way it sounds, it will be. But y'all, it's really going to be nothing. Oh no, we're going to make a big. Deal well, I mean, y'all, yes, you'll make it, but y'all going to be like, that's it. That's what we're waiting for. Unless I do something special, it'll be better than the Monkey Man skit. Oh, those yeah. of y'all that remember, <laughs> that's right, Monkey Man. I uh, hadn't seen him in a while. Uh, Padgematic also, thank you, Padgematic. If you could remove a storyline and give that screen time to another, which story would you cut and which would you give it time to? Um, good question. Um, I would honestly maybe remove bits and pieces from other things and give Doran of Dorn, Doran of Dorn, Doran Martell, his true role. You know, like at least at least scheme a little bit, you know, and not just get killed off. Not that we have to see the whole Dornish thing, but, it, uh, you know, maybe that and mention Ariana or, you know, Quentin or something like that and just kind of show more of what he was and what he was doing in the books. Because people that have not read the books, like, who's this guy? That's it? Mm -hmm. No, it, it's, it's much bigger than that, and it plays into the whole thing. So that, that would be my Myself, first guess. Or I don't know where I would shave any from. But like you, just a little here and there, maybe. Um, but I want the book you're on in the show because you hype him so much from the book. 
Yeah, yeah, and they but they should yeah they should have started that a while. But the Kings yeah. move well the Kings move. I will say that yeah, as far as you're on, at least include the dragon binder horn. Yeah, we got a little teaser with perhaps it's the horn of Jorman, although the books are described as much uh, bigger. But uh, you know, it's a device he needed to actually win Danny over, and it wasn't even there. He just used his ships like. That was the plot. That's crazy. So yeah, it, it, without Dragonbinder, he really has no power over anybody. Yeah, you know, so I don't no know. real leverage to get. No in there. leverage. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I think we are caught up there with super chats. I believe. Uh, what do you want to do? I don't know if what about work or anything. So I don't know if you want to yeah. wrap it up or. I, uh, or we, do yeah, a quick break and do another quick, ten minutes or something. Fifteen, twenty minutes. That's what I was thinking. Okay, is that cool with you guys? Still want to hang out? We still have 500 people hanging out? Yeah, let's rock and roll. So, uh, all right, so we'll be right back. Give us, yep, we're still live. So uh, we'll come back in just a few minutes and do one more little 15, 20 minutes or so and get out of here and let you guys go because it is Thursday, or now, it, now it's Thursday. All right, so we'll be right back.
All right, all right. We are back. We are back. We are back. All right, so we'll take uh, we'll do a few more questions and and then get out of here and let you guys get out of here too since it is hey, Carol Brown Thursday. Um, thought I saw a question a second ago. One one second here. I apologize. I had something pulled up. Um, Carrie Nevis, a PayPal donation directly. Thank you, Carrie. Appreciate that. And also uh, Brian. Uh, Brian S., we met at the con. I haven't been able to find James's contact info. Can you help a brother out? I'm horrible at this stuff. <laughs> um, yes, my my new channel is uh, Dust on the Throne, and um, I have an email, uh, Dust on the Throne at gmail dot com, and that's uh, oh no, I have um, uh, Twitter. At Dust Sports, yes. Here I can I can type. Yeah, I'll do that. Uh, at Dust Sports on Twitter. All right. Is that is that? Oh, I put a Y and, in there. So um, I have a. Uh, my pride is my little Facebook sports page. Um, it's called Daily Useless Sports Trivia, and then it has a dash and then dust after it. But yeah, you can also, if you go to uh, James's channel, uh, uh, Dust on the Throne, there's also, a, I don't know if you've checked it, but uh, Facebook messages there and stuff too, so, uh, or not, fa YouTube messages on YouTube, <laughs> not Facebook messages. Oh, there's your channel, Lala posted it. Thank you. So Lala you. Gig just posted the channel link in the in the chat there. Uh, Man, does want me to sing some Tom Petty. Uh, oh. <laughs> exactly. Uh, let's see, Night King Skywalker, Q&A for James. Oh shit! What was the name of the position, the poison that killed Joffrey? Hint: a name given to a murderer from Boston. The poison that killed Joffrey yeah. was that. Um, this was a trivia question as well in the trial by trivia. Shit. It was um, the God, murderer God. from Boston. I mean, you immediately think of the Boston Strangler, but that ain't the damn name of the poison, that, uh, or is it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, is it really something strangler? The strangler. The exactly. strangler, really? <laughs> That's right. Well, damn. It was yeah, a strangler. It, exactly. He, see, he knew it. You said it. You said it. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, Pajmatic again. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Donation from Super Chat. Because James is a champ and hang out with us still. You're the man, James. Thank you. Uh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Uh Amanda said, James, we got tonight also. Oh, yeah. I do some Bob Seeker sometimes. Uh, let's see here. Uh, <laughs> Mike Bush, no Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, let's see. Don't make me do my Robert Baratheon <laughs> laugh. <laughs> I know. You're getting all wheezy over here. Deep wheezy laugh. Uh Hoon Jive. There's Hoon Jive. What's up, man? Uh, Q&A. Jamie is Azor High, and we see him reborn somehow this season and gets to feel that damn book. Yes, I you know, book feel too. I do too. I think that was a little nod to something, and I think that may be the, the you know, whether it's, whether he saves, I think he saves the city again. Maybe they go back and, you know, if Danny gets there or something, it has something to do with uh, getting credit for what he did uh, instead of uh, you know, harassment. And also doing it a second time, so I think that could go in the book. If, if Absolutely, it, and maybe he never sees that if he happens to die, but somebody writes it. If there's a Queen's Guard or whatever it may end up being, or something like that, so I could definitely see something going in that book. It seemed to, he definitely seemed to uh, want that to be filled. It seemed to be a little nod to something going on. But I had my note, my note here from earlier when we talked about a possible Jamie Danny connection. That's really cool. yeah, that could tie into that as well. Sure. Uh, let's see. Um, where was I? Okay. Uh, Carol had one from Amber Tilton. Uh, first of his name, King of YouTube. Oh, Smokescreen, first of his name, King of YouTube, and protector of us nerds, and James and the King, keeper of our annoying questions. Love you guys. Keep up the great videos. Thank you, Amber. We love you too, Thank Amber. You. Appreciate really. that. Uh, Brutal Games, uh, Q&A, could Arya be the Quaith, uh, just green seeing into the past, future, and tell Danny and her dragons 
and that the dragons are fire made flesh and fire is power. Uh, interesting. I don't I don't know about Arya being Quaith. I don't think that would fit. Um, I mean, I could see somebody like you know uh, some people think of Shara Dane or something, but I've always I've questioned I've always questioned why anybody from Westeros would go over, especially like an Shara Dane character. Uh, and then end up in Essos and Karth of all places, and just sit around Karth and paint tattoos on people. I, I don't, I don't quite get that. But Danny comes there, and she kind of helps her out and makes her realize that you know dragons are making magic come back, and she keeps it with her a lot more in the books. So I don't think we see her again on the show, unfortunately. Uh, but she does give her the prophecy and warns her about a lot of people that come into her path. That includes Tyrion, like she says, you know, beware the lion, and. Uh, uh, the Mummer's Dragon and all that stuff we were talking about the yes. other day. So. Carol uh, here's Riddick. Yeah, yeah, Riddick's running around. Everybody's walking the door, so he's curious and probably hungry. Um, let's see here. Take a couple more before we get out of here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ooh, Brutal Game says maybe the wet nurse from Tower of Joy. Could that be Quaid? Oh, that's interesting. I, I don't know. I mean, I think that was, I think that was the kind of we saw her face looking over. It would made it. It's been meant to be like kind of a shout out to Wyla. Okay. Because they think Wyla was a wet nurse and a real person, obviously. And and you know, Edric Dane says to Arya in the books that they were milk brothers, him and John. So I I think that was kind of a nod to that. Because um, otherwise, then you have to go back to this old RLD thing. You know, why would. Why would she take thing, uh, an interest in Danny? You know what I mean. If if she didn't know, if you know, for example, if Danny was the the baby in the Tower of Joy, which is obviously is not the case. Uh, Tanner, we need to see Riddick. Yeah, we got to set something up to get him on on. Set. I want too bad. We're gonna figure something out um, with that. Uh, DJ Towns and Q and A. Will we ever find out why Braun went beyond the wall? That's a good question. I I, I hope so, uh, I, but. We've talked about that a few times. Yeah, it's, it's almost like a, we were talking about before. It's mentioned once. Is it just like, a, okay, he's been around, he's experienced, or does it matter? You know what I mean? Because I don't think it's been brought up again. But uh, a lot of people think it was the Night's Watch, but Night's Watch don't hire people, so he maybe he was in the Night's Watch and fled or whatever and never got caught. Uh, okay, I think I just answered that. Carol grabbed it, I believe. Uh, or is that the same one? Oh, no, it's Callie Cloud. Um, let's see. Callie Cloud, Q&A, what do you think Bron's background is? Where do you think he really from? Who do you think he really is? Yeah, same thing. Uh, I, I put, we were talking about this last time. I, I mean, it's odd uh, that, you know, he's there and becomes in Tyrion's life. And a lot of people think, you know, he was trying, you know, some reign of Castamir. If you're not familiar with that, you know, the, the reigns were a house that Tywin wiped out. But he, he could have killed Tywin at any time he wanted. Once he got in, he could have mm -hmm. killed Tyrion, Jamie, for that matter. So I honestly now think that he's probably just a sell sword. He probably just with is what he is. With a lot of swagger and he's very cultured. But yeah, I get that feeling too. He's just been around. Yeah, just been around. And and so the whole thing beyond the wall, you know, who knows if we'll get that answer. But I, I just don't think he would be. He definitely wouldn't be hired by the Night's Watch. Um, so whether he was a part of it, you know, and, and just escaped, or, you know, some people wouldn't think he went beyond the wall if he was hired to do work, because he did say work, faceless man type shit, but I don't think he'd be around that long. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's the ultimate mission with hanging out with the Lannisters and stuff? So, but again, it's a little bit different in the books. He doesn't go to uh, Dorne with Jamie. That's uh, Sir Ilan Payne. Click up just like a couple times to uh, I think it's Dunsfield right there. Yeah, because it says uh, Q and A for Chris and James. Which king's queen's guard armor design is your favorite? Mine was Roberts. Mine too. I really almost bought a cool print uh, at Con and uh, changed my mind. Yeah, I liked second. it, but I, I got to say the new queen's guard armor I I think it's badass. But I'm a I'm a sucker for anything black and chrome or you know, pewter basically in that yeah. time. Anything you are. I, I'll just love that shit. Now the the face on the the helmet on the mountain didn't look right. It looked like a damn Cylon. I mean, if he just had a fucking light right here. It, it'd be set. It'd be right, but the, on him because big fat ass. You know he ain't got no damn neck. Um, but <laughs> but uh, the rest of the guys, the, the the normal size guys, it looked badass. So that's that's my favorite 
uh, Queen's Guard or King's Guard armor, I guess, was the new King, Queen's Guard we'll see this year. Um, let's see, uh, I'll see one from Todd Brown. Will Sam return to the Night's Watch or will he stay by John's side? I don't think there will be a Night's Watch, so I don't know if he ever makes it back there or not. I don't think at the end of this thing there will be a need for a Night's Watch. I think it actually ends. So uh, I, I, it's hard to say if he will even try to go back to. I mean, he'll he'll f want to fulfill his duty and try to if he can. But obviously, the the dawn, the war comes comes first. So I don't know if he'll ever get a chance to go back to the Night's Watch. Have you put a lot of thought into, you know, let's say um, the White Walkers come down, and he raises all the dead. Yeah. All right. Or anybody that's still hanging around or laying around dead that's actually got a structure we were talking exactly, about before. Exactly, yep. And, all right, then there's a lot of fighting. And as all these new people die, they're raised. And anyway, we've talked about everybody's getting wiped out, right? There's yeah. going to be a few people left. Think about the stench of all those oh God. rotting corpses just laying around when all this finally comes to an end yeah that's that's i mean it's gonna be rough that's going to be a feast for crows <laughs> sorry i just i love that uh, they, they they snuck that in the in the show the line there that ramsey said but that's you know that's of course the the uh, fourth book so yes that that will be a damn feast for crows for sure and i'm writing down this what we talked about in the car about a possible series you're wanting to do i'm just going to write that down so oh I yeah yeah go for it um oh yes uh i know what you're talking about the name um Riddick, can you sit down? Everybody's hearing you click, man. Uh, let's see. Uh, to, uh, is this... Uh, 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 yeah, Streamlabs. Carrie Nevis. Thank you, Carrie. Thank again. you so uh, much. Q&A. Perhaps one of Danny's dragons, Regal, goes north on its own and is per the dragons pulling Danny's attention away um, away from the throne in the vision. She follows it to John beyond the wall. Yeah, that makes sense. That, I mean, it kind of fits. So if you think about it, you know, the snow there on the throne and then she's you know, attention's drawn to the wall. Yeah. Hmm. That's good. That's good. It is really good. It could be a, a kind of a literal interpretation of that. I can see it. Uh, so, yeah, good question, Carrie. Um, it seems to fit, regardless of whether that foreshadowed that or not. It, it seems to be what may happen. I mean, because at some point we're going to see ice and fire, and whether that's up there or whether that's down south further. Is it still remains to be seen? Because I don't, I don't think it has to be in the north necessarily. I think it's going to be and once that wall's down, it's very quick. It's, it's, wow. it's you know what I mean. It's coming, uh, and they're coming with the quickness. So, um, yeah, good, good, good question. Uh, Carol has. Uh, let's take a couple more here. Do we got uh, just maybe five more minutes or so? Uh, from Babalot, Q and A. Do you think uh, the White Walkers' weapons look like an ice, iced version of dragon glass? Could explain how to make armor and could explain how they make armor and shit. <laughs> I have thought that. It does. It, like it does look like... you know? Yeah, a real brittle, but, well, it's not brittle. It's very sharp, but, yeah, it does look like it, so... The way... It, it, I didn't mean shaped like arrowhead. You know what I mean? I mean, how arrowhead yeah, has the... Yeah, like where it's been flint, tooled. Flint, yeah, flint, yeah, like napped off. Yeah. Or, yeah, so, like, uh, stone napping and stuff. It does. Um, but I don't know. It's just we don't really know, at least in the books, like, uh, apparently they can just obviously manipulate ice so they just make them um so we don't we don't know if it's like a sub-zero thing where they just go you know and then wrap some cordage around it for a handle or like we said before if they have a culture is there a smith of some yeah, type where it's like he's making them and then wrapping them for people and handing them out yeah. you know, or they're breaking steel swords man. yeah they're shattering steel swords and they're so and after in in well I guess it's not immediate every time because like in the books you know you read you went mm -hmm. through that now with uh, the first the prologue uh, Royce, you know, he he hits him a couple. He gets a couple parries in before it snaps. So it's like it, it gets colder every time. <clears throat> Great point. So yeah, that's that's interesting. It is it is very similar. It's almost exact opposite. Okay, let's take uh, one more. I think are we? I think we're uh, caught living. Oh, Linda Stanfield, thank you, Linda, for another thank you, super Linda. chat. Today. Hey, Chris, new cooking vid coming soon. I'm going to try, Linda, but there, I'm going to try. I got two weeks before all hell breaks loose. So. I want to try to. Uh, I, the main thing is right now is getting this channel going, and I got a couple of con videos to do, and uh, a couple uh, prediction videos to do really quick in the next two weeks. So he's I'm talked try. about it. I have. He has been I have, talking. I haven't about forgot it. about it for sure. But I guess pun intended, he has put it on the back burner. <laughs> yes, exactly. I've, I've had to. Uh, 
All right, so let's take one more. Lala Gig, Carol Brown. So I have a question for Sir Tie Die, the, of, Sir Tie of Die and the Maester of Smoke. Sweet. What would a combo between Lady Olena and Lady Mormont sound like? Go. Oh, man. Hell, if I know. <laughs> that would be, uh, a, I can see it. All right, Lady, you know, Liana starts running that trap like she does best. But Olena says, hold up. Shut the hell up. You're 12. I'm 103. No, God. I got the experience. But then Liana says, oh, no. Uh-uh. Yeah. You ain't going to talk to me like no. that. Like, goes, like she no. did the Sand Snakes last year. Atlanta That's did so down there. Funny. She's like, let the adults speak. No. no. Liana ain't having She's that. She's not going to have that. No. And then I, she would learn, and then she would like I see I that just, going down, and then she and I could see a lady at the Queen of Thorns like good. smiling and saying, I like you. <laughs> you know, that type yes. of thing. You know, you, you know, that's that's the way I see that going on. I actually got a couple texts about her. About hold up. How wait, that's she right. Was. Exactly, Kira. Hold up. Wait a minute. I can see that exactly. Uh, let's see here. All right. So, anyway, I, I guess we'll wrap it up here. We're right at 1 o'clock. Uh, we've been doing two hours on this one, and we probably did a close to an hour on the shitty one. Hopefully that turns out okay. But, anyway, uh, thanks again to everybody. Uh, as far as the Con of Thrones go, I just want to mention one more time, thanks to James for holding down the booth. It was insane. We kind of had two different, My pleasure. two different trips almost, or at least there. Yeah, we did. Um, because it was, it, it, we just didn't know what to expect. Um. Carol, thank you so much for hanging out uh, there the entire weekend. It's a highlight. Keeping us straight and, you know, water bottles and stuff ready to go, survival kits and stuff like that. Amazing. Uh, Will and Tina, all my Patreons, I read everybody's name out, every single one in the first stream that kind of failed, so hopefully that audio is okay. Um, let's see. Um, again, check out Shire Mint, uh, Shire Post Mint. The link is in the description below. Um, it's uh, it's shirepost.com, uh, S-H-I-R-E post.com. They make the official coins for A Song of Ice and Fire Game of Thrones. And um, you can also follow them on an Instagram account it's, uh, under the same name. I'm sure it's linked on their website, but you can actually see the process of them actually minting those coins. They're badass, all kinds of coins from all kinds of eras like Targaryen Kings. Even Rob Stark had his own money you so know, cool. during, the, during his little reign. So very, very cool. Um, also, just to, again, thank you to um, my team, my, you know, my, my podcasting group, uh, Val, Roris, oh, cool. Tarzan, Kevin. Really appreciated hanging out with you guys in real life. It was fun to do. Unfortunately, we couldn't do a podcast from there because of technical things and internet, like we mentioned, it's all his fault with the whole AC adapter. Um, <laughs> um, thank you to Aziz, Ashea, and Sean from History of Westeros. Uh, very cool to hang out and meet you guys there. Thank you to, um, we'll see again, Zach. Tony Teflon. Yeah, Tony Teflon. All the YouTubers we met, Tony, Sir Hunts, Kyle, all you guys. All you guys rock. Uh, and, and, and especially to, to Zach and Hannah of, of, of Game of Owns and Watchers on the Wall, Sue the Fury, Oz, all you wow. guys that put this thing together. It was just an honor to be a part of. I had a great time. It was a blast. It was a blur, but a blast at the same time. So, Really enjoyed it, and and, re and thank you to all of you, because if it wasn't for all of you who hit that subscribe button, I know a lot of people watch YouTube with no accounts or unlogged in, but yeah. the subscriber count is what people notice, even though that number technically means nothing. It's almost like the social proof thing. Yeah. If you see a channel with more subscribers, you're more likely to subscribe, and if I would've, I, if I would've had you know, 2,000 subs like two years ago, I would have never been even asked, you know what I mean? So thank you to all you guys who subscribe, who comment, who like videos, and, and especially sharing videos. That's what gets channels growing, is sharing things on social media and getting them other places. Being mentioned outside of YouTube is now more important than being mentioned in YouTube because that's right. what brings people into the channel. And as the channel starts growing with numbers and views and watch time, everything is watch time, that's what gets YouTube pushing these channels out and uh, getting it served up to more people. That's why you see all of the YouTubers now saying, please hit that notification bell. It won't guarantee it, but it will at least get you a notification more than likely. Uh, so if you're just subscribed and don't hit the bell, you're probably not gonna ever see a notification. So anyway, that's all I wanted to say. I just wanna thank everybody again, and I uh, hope I didn't leave anybody out, but thank you guys so much. And uh, be sure to subscribe to get everything. Thanks for watching. Oh, are, you, are, you, are you good? I don't know I'm if you good. have anything yeah. else to add. Okay. Yeah, I threw uh, my list is marked off.
All right. So, yes, thank you so much. Uh, and be sure also follow uh, – damn, Riddick. I don't want he's chasing. Follow Smokescreen Vids on Twitter and Facebook, uh, Smokescreen Vids as well. Uh, I announce things there and, and, and post some other stuff every once in a while. But, you know, if you see announcements and stuff, it'll be on Twitter. So follow me there too. That's all in the, all, every description of every video. You can find all those links. Um, so anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next Sunday. Can't wait.